everyone. How are you all doing today? Hey, Geodude, it's good to see you. How are you all doing today? I have some coffee. I have some coffee. I have some more coffee. I'm tired. I'm a little tired today. What about all you? Hey, Jenna Tascala, good to see you. Hey, Windleby. Hey, Rakasan, 707 or 747. I keep I keep missing the four in that name. You were lurking in Endernax's chat. How was that? How was lurking in Endernax's chat? Was he talking about anything interesting and or um, morally repugnant? I have no idea. I don't actually know that much about um, Endernax's usual content. Whatever. I barely have enough time to watch the streams I like to watch. Kind of tired, but had to work yesterday. Yeah, that makes sense. He was going over a polling stream regarding the debate and getting visibly angry at women. <laughs> women? <gasps> I mean, come on. Don't you get mad over women? You know what I was doing before this? I was playing Apex Legends with Chud Logic. Apex Legends with Chud Logic. Yeah, that's right. You heard it here. Chud Logic was playing with a WOM. Oh no. That's right. Sorry, everybody. Chud Logic was playing Apex Legends with a WOM. No, he didn't. Chud Logic is actually really good at um, Battle Royale games. He's really good at Battle Royale games. Yeah, Apex is cool. Yo, look at this. I didn't know about this. Wait, what the fuck is the name of the character? Look at this shit. Hold on. I'm going to show you all something. Just take a look at this. Because we got a little bit of time before I got to do. Look at this. Look at her. Wow. 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 She's very pretty. This is a new character in uh, in Apex Legends. And I'm like, wow, I need to unlock her. Because she looks cool as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. There's some cool characters in this game. Also, there's another one whose name is like, uh, I can't remember her name. Sparky or something. I don't know. Something like that. Here it is. Yeah. This girl. What's her name? I can't fucking remember her name. Sparky or or something. Yeah, she's got a straight up pimp cane. It's absurd. It's amazing. Um, what the fuck is the character's name? Electricity girl. Or it's something like Sparky or something. A oh, Watson. <laughs> Look. Look at her. Oh wait, here. I got to go to the actual picture. Look at this. Look at this. Damn. Pretty. Damn. Damn. Bloodhound? Wait, I don't know Bloodhound. Is Bloodhound non-binary? That's cool as fuck. If so, let's see. Let's see. Let's find out. Oh, yeah. This friend. I didn't know that. Is there any point subbing on here? Yes, there is. There is a point subbing on here because if you sub on here, you will, um, you will automatically get subbed to the site. Um, for now... For now, we're going to keep using Twitch. Their clarification means that we're relatively safe for most of the stuff that we talk about on here. Um, the site will be done as soon as it is. It takes a little bit of time for me to set these things up. Um, but anybody who's a Twitch sub will also get a sub to the website for sure. So don't worry about it. Sub wherever is comfortable. I'm doing this. Everything that I'm doing is to make it as convenient as possible for my viewers to enjoy my content. And to get access to all of the wonderful stuff. It's going to be demonmama.com um, is what it's going to end up being. GG, just, I don't know. The GG thing was like, I mean, yeah, maybe. Maybe if I become a super gamer, as if I'm not already. But, um, yeah, oh, that's so cool. Bloodhound, I didn't know that. That's fucking awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be, yeah, it's going to be the Demon Mama site. It's going to be called demonmama.com. Um and yeah it's gonna be great yeah it's not up yet though so it will be a command not up yet um i need to make sure the site's up and running first and get all the emotes up and everything like that yes yes rakasan 100 would love that love that you were thinking about french montana i don't know what that means i don't know what that means I don't know what that means. What does that mean? This is mysterious to me. I don't know what the, what, the, what the fuck is this shit. What the fuck is this shit? 
Listen, it's been a wild ride this last week. A wild, wild ride. Um, and uh, I just wanted to let you all know that shit's getting pretty spicy. We're going to talk about some of it um, later tonight. But one of the ones that I wanted to touch on before we go into the panel is, uh, yeah, look at this. They got this up. This is They got this up real quick. Take a look at this. The Gretchen Whitmer, Whitmer kidnapping plot. On October 8th, 2020, the Federal Bureau of Investigation thwarted an attempt by 13 armed militia members to cap kidnap Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan. M Michigan Attorney General Dana Nassell called the aborted plot one of the largest cases in recent history and labeled the case as a rather unprecedented in nature. Let's find out. Let's find out. <sighs> Oh no! What did we? Th what did? What was I just about to say? I was just about to say it's probably QAnon shit, almost guaranteed. Oh, is this more? Is this more info on it? Is this more info on it? Yep, there it is. Holy shit! The spuck. Wow. The suspects were were tied to the Wolverine Watchmen. Wow. Um. I'm not going to comment on that name. Wolverine Watchman. What a dumb name. That's the dumbest name I've ever heard of. That's like double lame. Yep, no liberation today. Suspects named included Adam Fox, Ty Garbin, Barry Croft, Caleb Franks, Daniel Harris, Brandon Caserta, Joseph Morrison, and Pete Musico. Five of the men were Michigan residents, while the sixth was from Delaware. One of the plotters... Brandon Caserta wrote, wore a Hawaiian style t-shirt associated with the Boogaloo Boys in a TikTok video and on Fry and on Facebook praised Kyle Rittenhouse, a civilian who shot and killed two protesters during unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Castera was also a COVID-19 denier and supported the QAnon conspiracy. Hmm. Hmm. Look at that. What a... What a what a what a fine lineup we have over here. Yeah, we've got like uh Herc McGurk and like all of these other dumb names over here. Hostin Mahogie. Uh we got fucking Blurbin Frunken. I fucking hate Republican names are wild. Ty Garbin. It's either it's either two first names or it's something like this. Caleb Franks. Like, that, that's the two first names, and then you have, like, fucking, fucking Brandon Caserta, which just sounds like somebody who would own a fucking ATV shop in your town. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it would be like to be one of these people. Honestly, I'm probably pretty miserable. Let's be real. Antifa, Redneck, Revolt, Skinheads Against Hate are better names. True, Rakasan. All of those are better names. All, every single last one of them are better names than the Wolverine Watchmen. The Wolverine Watchmen literally sounds like something a child would come up with. Yeah, they're skinheads against hate. Yep, true, there are, there are, as it turns out. Um, yeah. Six people were charged with federal crimes, including conspiracy to commit kidnapping. Mm. Seven other people with state crimes, including plotting to target law enforcement. Hmm. All that law and order goes out the window when it's about QAnon, right? Probably boycott Israel. Probably they were like, that's just like me. Everybody hates me when I, everybody hates me when I say the N word in public. Just like what Magneto said. Yeah. But also there, I thought the skinheads, I thought skinheads against hate was a thing here. I thought there were left, there were, uh, non-Nazi skinheads in our country. But yeah, the, yeah, that's what I thought, Seglin. The original skinheads were leftists and then it got co-opted as it always is. Just like motherfucking Pepe. Remember when they stole Pepe? These fuckers always steal our cool ideas. Goddamn bastards. Fucking bastards. Jesus fucking Christ, I... All they do is steal. All they do is steal our cool ideas. It's fucking annoying if you ask me. It makes me mad. Pompo champ? We need a pompo champ. But guess what? 
everybody, I have an announcement. I have an announcement. They're trying to take our happy frog. It's true. I have an announcement. We're working on a new emote. We are working on a new emote. It's going to be, I'm just going to give you a hint, Demon Mama Oof. So we'll have that one soon. No, no other previews. Just that. You just get to know what it is. Demon Mama Oof is in the works. We're going to have a new emote soon. It's going to be fucking cool as shit. So yeah, get ready to be able to oof in chat whenever we need to. Yeah, it might be. Maybe it'll make you cringe or maybe it'll make our opponents cringe. Demon, haha. <laughs> we might need one of those. I've got a whole bunch of great ideas for emotes. I should tattoo a line of emotes on my arm just like this. Now, that might be a little bit. That might be devoting into it just a tiny bit. Hey, Kami Buddhist, thank you so much for the subscription. Deeply appreciated. All of you with these little subscriptions make it possible for me to drag myself out of bed in the morning and make content because otherwise it's really hard because it's tiring as fuck. Thank you so very much, Kami Buddhist, and I hope you enjoy your new beautiful emotes. A Pompo tattoo, my, may, maybe. Pompo is very cute, and I, I don't know. Like, look, look look at the Pompo. It's it's really hard to disagree with. It's really hard to, to, not, to not love Pompo, you know? It's just, ha he has this attractive energy. He has this, uh, you know, he has this draw to him, this magnetism. So yeah, today we are going to be talking about, as the stream title says, problematic pop culture on Kezbox's wonderful panel. We've got a huge lineup of people. It's going to be very interesting. So if it's something that you're interested in, hearing various um, lefty positions um, on whether we're too hard on problematic media, whether we're not hard enough on problematic media, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to be talking about that the whole time. Yeah, it's going to be a great topic because I think it's really important. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of shit going on right now. It's hard to cover much except for election and Donald Trump's fucking lungs and COVID and all that shit. However, I think it's important we make time for conversations like this. Wouldn't it be easier to talk about non-problematic media? No, that would be impossible because there's no such thing. Nothing. No such thing. Pompo and Pimpo. We might be able to get Pimpo at some point. Maybe. Maybe we can get a Pimpo. It'll just be Pompo with a little bow. Bing. There's Pimpo. That's how you know. Remember, the two genders. No bow and bow. Those are the two genders. Only two that exist. Don't like it? Too bad. Facts don't care about your feelings. Pimpo is Pompo on a Femme Day. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot we made that up. Hell, yeah. I forgot I forgot we came up with this lore. Hey, whoa, Sam Cedar and Noam Chomsky chilling with Pompo? I can believe it. I can believe it. I can believe it, believe it or not. Can you? Oh, my God. So, let me just share some random thoughts. Because we I like to do this at the beginning of stream. Talk about cool stuff. Um, Apex Legends is really fun. I'm really enjoying it. Um, might, the nice thing, if I decide to start playing Apex Legends more than I play Warzone, I can free up 250 motherfucking gigabytes on my computer. It's bullshit. It's bullshit that Warzone takes as much space as it does. It's absolute and utter bullshit. I can't handle it. Let's see, what else have I been doing? Oh, hey, wait, here's, oh shit, here's all the, oh god, that's a lot of notifications. Okay, let's see. Oh, I need to set this up. No, that's already set up. No, it's not. Okay. Yes, it is. Big game. It is extremely dumb. Yeah, it's extremely dumb. Pompeo? Oh. You got it. You figured it out, Atonino Aji. I was a Q-drop. My whole channel was a long, protracted Q-drop to warn you that Mike Pompeo is the next step of the plan. And I was telling you via a, a strategic misspelling of a joke based off of Pepe. True! True! You're right. We can make a Pompo wiki someday. Someday we'll have a Pompo wiki and the lore will be so complicated that nobody will even be able to get it. Can we get a Pompeo emote? No. That would be blowing my cover. Are you kidding me? Do you want me to not be able to bring you sweet, delicious drops of Q-juice? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Atono no Aji. Trying to blow my cover? The deep state will get me. I I'm kidding, by the way, uh, Twitch censors. I'm kidding. That's a joke. 
I don't believe in that. No. Stream is up. Jumping in streamer chat now, but deafened. Uh... Uh, let me see. Oh, wait, we're using, I don't know. Hold on. I am. I was the deep state all along. You thought, you thought that the deep state was satanic pedophiles, but instead it was just one demonic communist. Bam! Pompo is love. Pompo is life. Pompo jammer. Get the Pompo Jammers in there. Here we go. Look at this. If you install TTV, okay, listen. Pompo Jammer, this one, this animated Pompo, the one that ban dances, that dances is going to be available on my site. Straight in. Perfect. Boink, boink, boink. Nice and clean. It'll be amazing. Okay. Um. So I guess we're, uh, I guess we're doing whereby. Oh man, I wish people would do this. I wish people would sort out these details before five minutes before the thing. But okay. Okay. Listen. No. I can't. I must keep calm. <sighs> calm. I'm calm. I'm not angry. I'm calm. I'm not stressed. I'm not tired. Are you familiar with The Merchant of Venice? I think it's an interesting example of problematic media. It sounds familiar. Let me look it up and see if I actually know what you're talking about. Um... Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. This is a... Uh, yeah, 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 yes. I do know this one. I do know this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the sort of stuff we're going to be talking about. Here's my thing. I don't... I don't think that, like, we're hard enough on problematic media. But... I think we're hard in, like, I think we go about talking about it the wrong way. I think a lot of people tend to moralize over problematic media as if, if you enjoyed something that was problematic, you are a bad person, as opposed to saying, hey, we should be aware of what gets baked into the things that we create. And, um, if, if you cut me, do I not bleed? Yeah, I need to I need to do some Shakespearean practice so that I can deliver amazing soliloquies that just that make that alienate anyone who's not a Shakespearean actor. Something like that. I don't know. Wait, but lots of people like Shakespeare, right? Nobody's going to mind if I start screaming in old English or something. The Shakespeare play in Shakespeare's time, Shylock was portrayed as a comic character, the foreign Jew who gets tricked. In modern times though, he'd be per portrayed as a sympathetic and tragic figure. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't really know. I don't know enough about this. I haven't studied it enough um, to know, you know, what's going on and what critiques are. It's been, listen, it's been a very long time since I studied like literature and theater. Really long time, unfortunately. I used to, believe it or not, I used to study that kind of stuff. I used to actually study that stuff. It's just been a long time. So some of my memory is like, faded or it's been archived off in some corner of my brain um hmm. hmm hey this has got some this has got some gay shit in it i'm here for that hmm i see jeremy irons mentioned in the gay section and i'm like yep I feel like this is the whole thing about J.K. Rowling. A lot of people still enjoy a story about three plucky teens going on magical adventures, but it's necessary to recognize the toxic elements and the shitty artist. But to totally wall off problematic art, you're basically just walling yourself off from art altogether. That is very true. Um, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense, true, true leveler. Yeah. Um, there's, like, a lot of problematic art that I can think of. Um, I mean, the first... I mean, there's a lot of problematic comedy. Comedy is one of those things where... You really have to nail it in a very certain way for it to age. Comedy struggles um, is one of the hardest that gets hit by, like, becoming irrelevant over time. Um, but there is some comedy that ages very well. Um, and it's really hard to do because, you know, a lot of times in our comedy, so many of our, our implicit biases get just baked right in. Okay. Um, streamers only. Okay, I'm going to mute deafen myself, and then I'm going to join this and just keep an eye on it so that people know I'm here. 
Yeah, there's a lot of but there's a lot of problematic art out there. Again, like uh, the Simpsons. If you go back and watch like through the Simpsons, you're gonna be cringing a lot, especially if you're like trans or gay. There is a lot of like yikes, um, shit in there. Blazing Saddles is a um is actually really good. Blazing Saddles is one of the things that I think of. Um, yeah, you know what? Well, here's the thing. I've always referred to Pompo with he him pronouns, so I probably will keep doing that. I think that. Pompo is an any all type person. Um, any all. That's what I think about Pompo. You can you can use whatever pronouns you want with uh with Pomp with Pompo, I think. Um I can appreciate Simpsons were weird when addressing gay issues. Yes, they were really weird about that. There was some really weird stuff. There were some moments where they did it better than others, and there are some where it's really cringe. Actually made a gender fluid friend yesterday that lives in my apartment complex. That is fucking awesome. It is one of the best things in the world to meet other people, other gender non-conforming people around you. Really fucking amazing. I agree. Otano no Aji, I think Blazing Saddles is amazing. It's incredibly funny. It, it, it has aged quite well given its time. Um, even some of the stuff that seems kind of yikes is actually um, pretty well done. Pretty handled relatively well. Um... Yeah. That's how I feel too, Cosmic Sean, and I'm only 30. That's just how it goes. That's just how it goes. All right, let's see. So, voices in Discord, and then we're going to do whereby. Do, 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 do. Oh, hey, here's the whereby. Let's get this set up. Here we go. Bam, bam. We're getting ready. We're getting ho whereby. Back to lurking for me in the wage cage. Listen, I hope that I can keep you entertained while you're in the wage cage so that your brain doesn't have to be in the wage cage. All right? That's all I have to think. That's all I, I can hope for. Otherwise, thank you for being here and thanks for tuning in, Wendelby. You rock. Let's uh let's get into the let's get into the the Vox, the Kez Box Vox Box. There we go. Damn. Look at this crowd. This is gonna be a great. This is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. Look at this. We got sheep in the box. We got Kez. Hey, thanks for the follow, Kate Morin. Happy to have you. Um, maybe. Yeah, but there's a reason why it couldn't be made today. There's actually a great video that we could do. You know what? I'm actually, maybe we can watch it together. Yeah, we could watch this together. Can you imagine where you need the Elon Musk brain chip to work and it tracks your attention? No, I think I would rather die. Like, um, that sounds like a joke, but I actually think that I would rather die than live in a world like that. I don't know. It's really hard to say. Um, I'm going to save this question for later. Maybe we can watch that video afterwards. That would be fun. Box, box, box. The Vox box with Kez box. Uh, let me see if people are jumping into voice yet. If so, I will jump into voice myself. If not, I will not. Ha ha. Ha ha. But you didn't see that one coming. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Johnny uses they, them. I recall. Oh, it looks like everybody's on. Wait Joe second. Lewis. Hello. Hi, Demon Mama. How are you? Good. How are you? Am I good to... Uh, I'm streaming. Am I good to... Uh, Demon to Mama? Broadcast? Am I right? Yes, Demon Mama. I couldn't see the, the list, so I yeah, was going yeah, yeah, off yeah. just what your voice sounded like. Hello, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me still, or...? We're just waiting for a, a few more people. Mother says running a little late. Like, I haven't heard anything from Mass G at all, and he's supposed to be here, so I don't know what's going on there. Huh. Something's working <gasps> incorrectly here. Oh, Maybe the panels are so much fun. Cut. <laughs> hmm. Something's going on. To be on fair, there. I did overbook a little bit, so it's not the end of the world. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, uh, oh, fuck. So, <gasps> the the, my, my webcam is, is not <clears throat> working very well. I'm going to try test, and fix test. it. Uh, have you tried plugging it out and plugging it back in again? Okay, they can hear me now. They can <laughs> Everybody hear me. also remember, if you're streaming at the same time, your OBS may be taking up your camera. My Discord's about to crash, so I'll be right back. Yeah, okay. everyone, just as a forewarning, uh, Discord's latest patch has been uh, the one An that went asshole? out this morning. Yeah, it's been terrible. Um, <laughs> you have to so do the thing to you where it'll say error. Discord because like error and like a million well. error boxes pop up. Yeah, it'll give you like a whole bunch of Java errors. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, like a million fucked. of them. In yeah, the crashes. newest patch has been doing that to me all morning. I've had like two or three crashes of Discord, so uh, just a just a forewarning. 
Okay, You're well, thank you for the warning. Yeah, I really, I really we can like always, uh, Johnny. We can always revert to whereby if we need to. What the fuck? Thank you for the sub, Sheep in the Box, for me and for making me jump, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true, true leveler. If you think that's bad, I was playing Phasmophobia with uh, Mr. Book, Geek and Cash like, and actually uh, fashion, Taylor whereas the a film while is, ago. like, a, a mocking of fascism? I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I feel like social games like that are kind of becoming the new the new hotness. You got like Among Us. You kind of I mean like uh, what's the, what's the um, Fall Guys is kind of like a bit of a social game. That and then a, that that, that Phasmus thing seems like a yeah. Like it's a fun thing. game, but well, it can be terrifying. Well, I think it is is that the, Kez is from, uh, uh, Kez twenty twenty we've been kind of so socially deprived at this stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That that we're just like anything. <laughs> and yes. they've been perfecting it. They they really got the hundred players in a lot. Yeah, that's what really I thought. True leveler. Mm. Jake, you might need to refresh sometime. your camera's frozen. Okay. Okie okay. Kaz is Irish. Zanzi. Oh, so this camera angle makes me look really fat, but that's fine. Uh, you're, you're fine. Me too. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hi, Zanzi. Uh, the whereby is in the group message. Okay. Oh, are we gonna get music from Mitnerd? Yeah, I have my uh, musical co-moderator. <laughs> Will it be problematic music? Is the question. It better not be. Just play WAP. It's fine. Just play WAP through the whole thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Demon Mama. Now that you said, will it be problematic music? <laughs> she was like, I will go right out. fucking Irish on your ass. I can't so make me music. come through this camera. Are you just are you just gonna say the gamer word over and over again? I only know songs by R. Kelly. <laughs> We're supposed oh to be able to hear the music, Jake. Remember, you're supposed to be my musical go moderator. Can, can you, still you, not you know the worst part about that? No, we're just the keys going. Here, tell me about this. Oh, I can see that, though. Nope. Never. I th oh, oh. Uh, Mitnerd, the thing is, it might be from um, Discord updated this morning, and it reset all of my audio settings. So you might have to go in and reset your uh, your audio inputs and stuff. Um, how are you, Zanzi? It's nice to see you. Zanzi, good I'm, to see you. I'm doing well. Doing well. I'm hoping my internet holds up. We can, but hope. I swear yeah. we got two Irish lads in here and I'm going straight back fucking home again. Full culture. <laughs> that should be better and my mic should be a little different now. It was Anzi, your culture or town. Okay. Then here's the here's the only problematic music you get today. Hey. I think only the Americans will recognize it. <laughs> no? Okay. I don't nope. know it. Nope. <laughs> no, what was that? I've no idea. Like, no, I'm, I feel I'm, like, I'm glad I feel you don't like know it. Something it's something that plays during Homer Simpson's scene on The Simpsons. Oh. I'm, I'm glad we don't know it. It's it's from our civil war, and it's from the other side. You say it sounded, uh, sounded racist -y. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that's that's Dixieland, the the song uh, that the South appropriated for its army. Uh, Can you I just play fucking... Wonder Wolf first. <laughs> now I have the fucking in my head. Well, now you're cancelled. No, that's now that's canceled. what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. We got music Oasis for this like panel. Garbage. It's gonna be chill. Uh oh, is it like a... I won't mute you, boy. Behave. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. But I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now, <laughs> bro. Oh, well, when you say the garbage, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I hate all of you so much. Yeah. Please don't hate me. I can't handle the hate today. <laughs> no. I love to Why hate, you hate me. I'm oh, oh, really quick. Speaking of historical horrible things, as far as music goes, I inherited a bunch of forty fives when my uh, when my grandparents closed the bar and they took apart the jukebox. Mm -hmm. And one of them, one of them is called "If the South Would Have Won." Oh. Okay. It's a it's a jaunty little uh 1960s uh classic country thing and wow. it's it's horrifying, wow. absolutely horrifying that they have a way of sending me the who, who who doesn't love some nice lost cause negationism in the in their bars? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, the one thing things. that Could I you send me a re recording of it because I definitely want to write a very <laughs> horrific, like apocalyptic "What if the South had won" parody of it. That'd be funny. Oh yeah. Oh, there I was a really great tempted. one of those in uh, they did it in two thousand and 
three was in Amer- uh, I can't remember which studio did it, but there was a great series about that, like where they kind of made a mockumentary of like mm-hmm. if the South had won the Civil War, mm. and it's like, uh, and what it's actually doing is just critiquing all the shitty things that have survived from the Reconstruction era, mm-hmm. like mm. the the racial stereotypes and shit. It's uh, I, I have to look it up. I'll, I'll see if I can find it for you. I think it's I heard about this at cool. some point. The one thing I really appreciate about Civil War era music is that. Every single anthem of the South was parodied extremely brutally by the North in the funniest way. And if you go and listen to it now, it's just str- – they were just straight up just dissing the shit out of them constantly. And it was absolutely oh, yeah. brutal. Brutal. Way down south in the land of traitors, rattlesnakes and alligators. Right away, right away, right away, right away, right away. Right away. Yep, that sure. one That one came back into cycle recently. And that I'm was like, basically – Way down south in the land of the traitors, rattlesnakes and alligators. Right away, right away, right away. Uh, Racist fucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have it. The you know, I'm really tempted. I am really tempted with all this talk of fucking revolutionary music to sit here and go on. Come out, ye black and tans. Come out and fight me like a <laughs> oh, man. No, up. By the See, way, I have living- the... I don't think uh, he knows I'll that. I'll throw it into the, uh, into the little group chat there, but this is the actual, like, the whole thing's on YouTube of what I was talking about. Oh, it, 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 it's, it's an hour and a half, and honest to God, it's, it's worth... If you just have an hour and a half to spare, just it's worth watching. Nerd, do you know uh, the night they to- the night they tore old Dixie down? I don't. Not well enough to play it's it and sing it. Mm-hmm. I love that song. I didn't. I had never really listened to lyrics, and then I listened to it one time. I'm like, oh, oh this yeah, is like completely just like I wish the South. Oh yeah, that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned or a lot about the Civil I wish the South did not burn down. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I learned. I learned a decent amount of uh, just sort of Civil War music of the era while it was going on when we were doing. Uh, when we, I was researching for Abraham Lincoln for that music. Ah. That was interesting. Wait, you were yeah. alive when the Civil War was going on? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, he's much older. Uh, actually, than it's really funny that you guys say that. I I never really learned any so if Civil War music until I was older, and I think it's because they don't teach it to children anymore in the well, South because they're ashamed that it was parodied so much. That's probably what's going on. So they're more ashamed of that than the slavery. Here. Well, That's if you sure. ask, I, th- this is pretty well known in, around here, but. You may not know this. Um, there, there is a prevailing myth in the South that the Civil War was not fought over slavery; it was fought oh, over yeah. state rights. It's, I've, I've yeah. heard yeah. It's, it's, it's called the lost cause. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's called it's called the the, the lost cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. a famously shitty myth. My my dad yeah. uh, lives in the South, and when I used to visit him, it always shocked me how many houses would still fly the uh, Confederate flag in. The modern era and i'm just like oh god that was a problem in vermont of all places for a while was kids into the confederate flag and then there was a i had a teacher who oh, as, as a point of principle in in his presence and in his class we were only allowed to call it the slavery flag and that put an end to it pretty fast policy. as a as a child i was like oh it just represents the south it's it's just like our area it's cool and then you get like anywhere close to sixth grade and you realize oh like I got I got black people in my class. I can't fucking like come to school with a fucking Confederate flag on the back of my truck. Like that's that's not cool anymore. It, the year is 2010. Get your shit together. Like that that was yeah. pretty much my childhood. Doesn't, that, doesn't it just okay. represent the Dukes of Hazard? Okay, 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 okay. Shush. Food. Um, Let's so focus, when everyone. Numb nuts comes back. Um, we're probably going to dive into it. We're waiting for Maschi, Mabase, and Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis is having internet trouble. Mabase and Maschi are running late because of IRL stuff. I'm ready. But they'll be here when they're here. So once Jake comes back, we'll get into it. Sound good? Okay. Sounds wonderful. You tweeted out the uh, the link so I can retweet it, by the way. Yeah, okay, I did. Cool. Everyone, if you follow me on Twitter, go retweet it for me. Cool, go find Please. It. We'll do it. Already As I said done. To you in the last old stream, there, uh, I, I have more sense than to go on Twitter. <laughs> true, Rakasan. True. I agree. To be fair, I only use it for work, so. 
well, Ugh. that and shouting at people for being Egypt. Did you know? Fun fact: Abraham Lincoln <laughs> wrote letters back and forth with. I'm Irish. I can't uh, let our, people be our wrong our on the internet. Best friend, Karl Marx. Oh. It's antithetical. True story. True story. Uh, I I just I I just tweet quotes or just random little shine. Marx was very anti-slavery. Arguments. Because when I do, I just I've way too much ego in that. And was very very. Or um, you sit there and go, you know, by arguing about this stupid Abraham pointless Lincoln thing, to, you're uh, doing this. Really interesting. <laughs> Yeah, he was. And you go off on uh, well, some philosophical context, bollocks that nobody understands except you. <laughs> yeah, they were pen pals, well, it, it, basically. Part of what happens yep. to me is because I'll I'll see the tweet and I'm like, oh, that's fucking wrong. I'll reply. And then I'll get so annoyed at reading back my reply because I didn't at all reply well that I will then spend the next six replies trying to say what I actually meant to say. Mm. The secret? Don't discourse on Twitter. It's true. Oh, yeah. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never, never yeah. discourse on Twitter. Just I never do. Your own I want a demon way. mama's code of Twitter. Do not discourse. D N D. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I thought what I that that was what we were world. here for. You know, I thought that that was what we did this shit for. Instead of going on Twitter, where you can only have 120 characters at a time to explain yourself. Oh, yeah, I had one more. Like, hmm. I, I had one more question about American Ed and the, and the slavery flag real quick. I got to learn from a slightly out there history teacher in high school that, okay, this wasn't actually the battle flag of the Confederate army. It was only ever used in these very few minimal contexts in the actual civil war. This was taken up oh, because no. it was the flag of the KKK and because it then became the Mississippi state flag after it was very publicly the flag of the KKK. Did you learn any of that in school? I got to learn that in high school at least. I did not know that. Never been in the States and I knew that. That's that's just the thing with uh, uh, formerly imperial nations, isn't it? It's just, I mean, like in the UK, we rarely, if ever, learn about, you know, the atrocities we, uh, well, not we, but like uh, our ancestors carried out. I didn't know that either. It's like that meme. It's like y'all sipping tea and that's what y'all think that y'all's history is. And then y'all as a werewolf destroying everything in your path is what your actual history is. Oh, Oh, yeah. it's, It's not even that. Like, it's not even that blatant, right? Because what they're taught in schools here... I experienced, like, the very end of the UK school system, so what they call college, which is a step before university here. And... Yeah. yeah. And you're not taught about the shit that happened in Ireland. The only thing you're told is that the IRA are terrorists. You're not taught about anything that went down in India. Nothing in South Africa. None of it. What? Oh Pretty yeah, much. no. Like in history education, basically you learn about like the Romans, the Middle Ages, and then like when you're an actual like closer to being an adult, when you're like between yeah, fourteen and eighteen, great. you basically only learn about like modern history, like um, Realistic like the World background. Wars and like Russian Revolution and stuff like that. And but the IRA nice. happened like that's like the nineties. Oh, oh yeah, mean, it's it's wild. We don't learn like here in the U.S. We don't learn anything about like the unfathomable amount of intervention that we've done in in South America. It's just literally just they just don't talk about it. Oh yeah, global stuff as a whole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh yeah, like, so... I mean, we don't we don't learn about anything like to do with Africa or or any of our you know actual history. <laughs> so sorry. Be right back. For fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. all going according to plan excellent hey chat how's chat how are you oh, chat hey, seem chat. fine i mean yeah who knows i really? did talk about that with we, my chat in my state we talked about it a little more but that we had a very progressive approach towards um indigenous sake, sheep. issues what i will stand on you what have i done i haven't done anything <laughs> you think i don't have my chat open in front of me don't know what you're referring to. Baba Booey. Okay, I still don't get that Baba meme Bowie. at all. I must have missed that. But... Baba Booey. Okay. Yes. Okay. That started in go. Chud's thing when there was that massive fucking voice call with like 50 people in arguing with Limitless Chris. That's what started it because Lex came in when Chris and I were arguing and just started pressing his Baba Booey sound click button on repeat. Okay. Right, <laughs> Are you Baba Booey pilled? I am. Oh yeah! yeah. Oh, I, now I it's was... starting in my chat. I wasn't away. <laughs> I wasn't here like during that time. So yeah. Okay, so now that Jake's back, we're gonna get started Baba because Boobie. I don't know when everybody else is gonna so rock much. up. Joe Lewis is having internet trouble. Mabase is running late. So is Mass Chi. So... I'm pulling pad on because my laptop is a potato. Then it falls to us. <clears throat> we we must arm this breach. 
and fight. Oh, yeah. right. Let's fight. On me, Mafai, your knickers, please, woman. Nay. <laughs> or oh, is it time to lop? Or well, that's 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 always good. Right. If so. I had Here's oh, the question. Yeah. A lot of people learned about it from Jordan are we, and Jordan are we too harsh on the modern day media for a lack of representation or bad representation or offensive stereotypes no. or yikes language, you know, ableism, that sort of shit. You know, stuff that is in a liberal society very day to day for everybody, but that is often called out um, in media. Because they're supposed to be role models. They're supposed to be improving these things, and nine times out of ten, they don't bother. Are we too harsh? Should we maybe step back, give them more of a chance to catch up? Or are we doing the right thing, being as go-for-the-throat as we are? Uh, I'll start with Kobe for an opening statement, because he's just who's on the top for me. Sure. You know, I think that we got to talk about like what type of media we're talking about. I'm assuming probably like mass media, but yeah, I think we, we I think we need to. There's really not any other way. Uh, here, in, you know, here in America, we don't really, unfortunately, don't do a lot of like federal funding for arts or anything like this. A lot of our the the, the way media and movies and uh, music is made is because people buy it in the market. And so I think that's really important that people that believe in things like uh, racial equality or believe in LGBT rights that these uh, that you ask for you know, you kind of not ask but you. Should you do what you can to uh, influence the uh, system as it is to make it so that the kind of things that you want exist more. So yeah, I mean, are we too harsh? Uh, I think that it depends, I guess, on the uh, instance. I think a good example of this would be the ridiculous moral panic, uh, the very, very ridiculous uh, discourse around the cuties movie. You know what I mean? There can this kind of stuff can be used uh, can be used inappropriately. I've never seen the movie, so I can't really speak to it. Uh, but also, I mean, movies like that. That's kind of what the point of doing a shocking movie is, right? Is you want people to talk about these things. You want to talk about child exploitation. That's the point of doing any of these kind of things. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mittnerd's got his mouth full, so we'll skip over Jake for a minute. I'll come back to you, don't worry. Jake, I gotta Johnny, you go next. Uh, okay. So, I think the answer to this is probably threefold. Uh, the answer to this is that, A, it's contextual. Um... It's entirely contextual. Like if you if you are going to complain about something, do it because it is out of context for what is appropriate. If you are doing something that reflects people's actual speaking patterns, then you should probably be including things like, uh, you know, curse words and and you know inappropriate non PC things. Like that's contextual. Uh, number two is that uh, it is entirely yet, related so. to. But I can maybe go through the digital one like I'll put it up tropes on in media um and larger media is is not famous for being able to really write things that are uh always that always do what they're supposed to do while still being marketable that the cuties thing is a good example like they try to call out this stuff but in reality like the way they shot the film is just like it's basically just doing what they're complaining about um number three is sort of the answer to number two which is that when you support your local artists i live near new orleans so we have a lot of people here making movies and and doing media in a really interesting way and telling stories like when you support those local artists and you get as close to grassroots as possible for how you make media, you will get really more accurate representations though, of how people really actually bad. interact. Uh, so support your local Washington. media and support your local artists. That's my that's my take. It's wild here in Washington because we have a jungle Seems primary. Fair to me. Dima Mama, you're up. Excellent. Um, no, I don't think we're too hard um, on pop culture or media. Um, personally, I just think we tend as a society to go about it in a really um, bad way. Um, I think we should be very critical. I always encourage a, a strong culture of critique. The problem that we have right now is, um, in my mind, inspired by our focus on like, and especially, this is especially true with film of like this auteur theory that's been sort of baked in um, and goes hand in hand with our hyper, hyper individualist way of thinking about things. Um, in a lot of countries, but specifically in the United States, which is where most of my, you know, um, out, uh, outlook is going to come from. So in my mind, what tends to happen is um, 
there tends to be backlash on the first name that's visible, whether it's that, uh, like in the case, you brought up the cuties thing. So, um, I don't know anything about the actual film itself. I've not seen it myself. I've, I've seen a couple of people's analysis, um, but I don't really know enough to say myself. However, the main thing that got people mad about it was the U S advertising, um, which was not a decision as I understand it by, the director, by any of the actors in the film, by any of the people actually involved in making the film, what was instead a decision by a marketing firm, probably hired by or internal to Netflix. And in my mind, we have this idea of just like sort of like honing in on the first name that's visible. This is like, this is the director who made it. That means they must have done everything and they picked the art and all this stuff. But that's simply not true with almost anything that we do. And a lot of times that becomes um, like... It, it becomes this uh, this block to us actually delivering effective critique. Um, and I think that we could do better. I think that we can encourage a better um, culture of, of, uh, of, of media critique. Um, but I don't think we're necessarily too hard. I really want to see people dig in and, and bring their genuine critique against art because that's how you grow art. That's how you grow culture is by introducing many differing perspectives and letting them sort it out and figure out who's right about it and why. And maybe nobody's right, but we all learn from it. So, yeah, in my mind, it's not so much a matter of being too hard, but how we go about doing it. And how we go about doing it is very, very, very much um, influenced by our hyper individualist consumer focused approach to pop culture and media. Gala lad, you're up, go. I don't have a awfully developed take on this, I suppose. Um I, I agree with a lot of uh, Johnny Scarlett's initial points about the uh the idea that it's very contextual and very often I've seen attacks on what were very often historically accurate portrayals of something not necessarily glorifying but merely trying to portray it as it was and when you're trying to portray something in context and then point out how that is horrible attacking something for having for example shitty language you know, using offensive slurs to me that is missing the point uh, similarly we often pin it on people who shouldn't really be pinned go, for you know, directors who often don't make the calls about particularisms like with the Scuties film. Uh, it's cultural difference too, you know, like uh, the, the French film cinema scene is obviously very different to the Anglophone cinema scene. And uh, Overall, I think often the main issue is that the, it's not that there are critiques to be had, but it's that the critiques that go in are often the wrong critiques. They're critiquing it, they're critiquing the tree and ignoring the forest. That's a fair thing. Yeah, that I actually totally understand where you're coming from there. Irishman number two, Zanzi, go. Hello, hello. Um, the answer to the question is no, we're not too harsh, and let me tell you why. Um, we need to never forget that the media is the professional organ of public opinion. Now, obligatory Marxist take, it's actually the organ of um, private investment. But never forget that they recruit from the professional class of opinion piece writers. They usually have some sort of education or training with a journalism background or an English background. They are literally trained and paid to write opinion pieces to distribute to the general public. They have the backing of capital and the backing of society behind them. So they're not just ordinary people. Um, yeah, you'd be surprised what they how many say matters, come and from we training. have sociological studies and data to indicate that how, how that you word things the way that really, really is. matters. One of the impacts of how this happens is in the way the media portrays young criminals, the way they describe them being young offenders or kind of like young hoodlums. When there's a push to try changes towards the idea of targeting the behaviour rather than the identity, because when you pathologise an identity, it can be very difficult for society to unlearn that pathology. So when you have a group of people who are pathologizing a lot of um, identity uh, uh, descriptions with kind of sloppy language, you see this a lot in LGBT struggles where the media 100%. will latch onto what is 100%. a sellable headline and they will then use that and push that. And it is the people in those minorities who suffer because here's the thing. If you harass a journalist, yeah, they suffer from that. But when you harass people in really disadvantaged minority groups, they die. It's that simple. These are not apples and oranges. There is a very different case here. But we must never forget that when we are combating this, we have to attack the actual system itself 
because um, I write in a capacity for my university newspaper. I know it's tiny, it's insignificant. But here's the thing. I write, I submit an article, it goes through my department editor, it then goes to the main editor, it gets back down to my department editor, I don't choose the headline, and by the time it goes up with my name on it, maybe half of what I wrote remains, and the rest will be editorialised. So what are we critiquing? Are we critiquing the author or the system through which we're trying to make sure we can sell ads online? Uh, We have to target the source, not the individual, because like Dima Mama said, we have to avoid this whole author bullshit when mass media is a collaborative effort. They sell you individual personalities to make it more easier to develop cults of personality when the issue is mass media, not the individuals writing for them. Death threats are not cool, no. Not cool. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, Sheep, you go next and then we'll circle back around to Jake. Okay, sure. So um, I guess, first of all, I probably should um, make it clear that uh, whilst obviously we're talking about um, whether or not we should, we're too harsh on uh, on creators or anything like that, we should probably make it clear that um, obviously the next step to that isn't to like ne- necessarily legislate or to ban like negative or aggressive portrayals or anything like that, because um, obviously we're not in favour of uh, censorship or anything like that. But I do think it's important to put social pressure on the media creators uh, to ensure that there is at least some repercussions uh, when this stuff happens. So uh, likewise, I do think that we need to make changes within creative industries to ensure that more people of minority groups do actually have access to them, especially in like creative and decision making hey, positions. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we get to Welcome a stage to where community. minority representation is, Dino for the most part, the in the hands of people of those minority Dino groups, or at least, or the very least, um, with significant impact from them. So, regarding whether or not we, as like lefties or I guess online people, should be less harsh, I'd say probably no. Although, obviously, that comes with caveats. Like, yeah, obviously, if someone is trying to be progressive or make a positive portrayal of say trans people or whatever but utterly fucks it then yeah okay maybe we should be more willing to educate than attack but at the same time if you're a creator or writer or actor or whatever you should be doing a lot of research before deciding to go ahead and creating media portraying any subject matter that you're not intimately familiar with already but especially if it's stuff that can directly and pretty significantly affect people's lives and if you don't you do deserve a lot of criticism for that so uh, I do believe this stuff is important so media representation can and does affect people's lives there's been a lot of studies um, most of which do show that positive representation can and does help with self-esteem and assimilation into society for all groups and that obviously negative representation representation does the opposite so uh, yeah, i do think this is something we should be down, taking very seriously um Additionally, I'd say when particular groups are demonized or stereotyped on a wide enough Thank basis, those portrayals can that. start Sometimes to affect to public perceptions, the, uh, and we should bear that in streams. mind, because the media does have power, and it is incredibly important, in my mind, to stop that power being used to harm vulnerable people, whether deliberately or through ignorance. And if that means that we do have to be a bit mean to Scarlett Johansson or J.K. Rowling, then fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> That's fair. That's entirely fair. I mean, all I need to do to demonstrate what you were just talking about is point to the old Ace Ventura movies and their depictions of trans women. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, fuck, I forgot about them. Yep. Which happened to coincide, and I wonder why, with a spike in transphobic sentiment. Hmm. Jake, I did not know that. All right. Uh, as far as media and representation, I don't think we can be too critical. I think, as it obviously, with things like news media, I think there's no way to be too critical as far as represent, especially a representation of people's lived experiences that then informs public consciousness. And with entertainment media, and especially when I'm thinking of like entertainment media, children's media, comedy, things of that nature, I I strike the ground of we can't be too critical. We could be too harsh on something that is incrementally beneficial, but still problematic, but we can't be too critical of it. So the only thing that I see is I do see sometimes the alienating approach of this is everything that's wrong with a thing I like, as opposed to this is why I still like this thing that is problematic in all of these ways. And in that respect, I think we can shrink my camera just in terms of our own content propaganda. We can be alienating if we are too harsh, but not if we are too critical, because we can be deeply critical of something and still recognize why we might enjoy it. Like a lot of music that I grew up listening to. (laughs) Make my camera bigger. I don't want to block block Mabisei out. Mabisei. 
Shit, I pressed the button too many times. Hang on. Uh, I'm just checking. Okay, Mavise then. Uh, Mavise, we were just giving our opening statements uh, about whether or not we are too harsh on modern media, whether it's pop culture or news media or whatever else, in regards to bad representations or no representations or stereotypical portrayals or yikes language, blah, 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 blah. Do you want to go ahead and I could, but then people give don't your know take? it's my stream. It's kind of like a, a watermark so people know it's me. But thanks muted. for the suggestion. You're muted. Oops. All right. Okay. Is, it, is the mic working? Yes. We are right. Okay. Awesome. Um, so are we yeah. too hard? I just want, I want it to serve as like, a um, watermark so people know they're on my version. For me personally, like, I don't, like, I don't really think so. Like, I don't know. Like, like it's just been worse. Right. But like shit only got uh, better because be people were hard. So like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like a, like a state of course. Do you like, like things can always be better. Like, I don't think you should like harass people or do like death threats or something because like, I don't know, you like someone pulled a uh, bear, you know, killed their gay or, or, or let the black that, right? guy die first. But like, I, I don't think that people should like take their foot off the neck of, of the entertainment industry, especially when it comes to representing uh, minorities. <clears throat> Makes sense to me. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm waiting for. Yeah, so, perfect. I'm happy. Last year is in the voice chat. But there he is. Ooh, it's getting crowded in here. We've got a lot of people. And now he's in the thing. Wait, glad turn his camera on. It's, when a, it's going to be but... interesting. There's a lot of good perspectives here, and I think it'll be a good round. And then we can have his. This isn't really a debate. It's well, more of a discussion. So that's heard, cool. So I might have we'll to go over everything for him again. Hey. There you are. There we go. Now I can make my camera pick again. You're muted on Discord, you dingus. <laughs> Very quiet. Sorry about that. No, uh, it's my first day. Hold on, just have it at the <laughs> ready. No, it's fucking not. It's actually my second day, so. Yeah. Uh, but you want to all here, see me? Oh yeah, I apologize for that. I had a couple of uh, IRL emergencies I had to deal with. <laughs> You're good. You're lucky I'm Life not a right winger. You'd be fired. <laughs> we wouldn't be associating if you were a right winger. Um, right. So the question Ooh, is: spicy. Are you on the modern media, whether it's pop culture or journalism or whatever else, for shitty portrayals or no portrayals or yikesy language or whatever else? Do you have an opening statement? Um, I'm gonna. I don't really have. Um a set kind of view on this per se. Um, it's not really kind of an area that I focus in too much on like my news and political commentary. A lot of my stuff tends to be more like electoral politics, um, uh, activism, that kind of stuff. Um, but I, generally speaking, I would say probably not. Um, I think that we need to, I mean, to deal with these uh, in order to change the uh, precedent, right? I mean, we don't, we have a day of national trans uh, remembrance for a reason, right? Uh, among other examples I could point out. Um, one kind of that's been in more my personal experience, and this relates to like the medium of like porn specifically, um, are things like, for example, the term BBC, which I think is particularly a very yikes um, term, especially in the context of like my personal lived experience uh, within what we'll call the lifestyle. So, you know, more of like a a sex club kind of sexual liberation, you could say like swinger type of um, environment where people will literally refer to like a black person or, you know, insert person's name here and like literally substitute that with BBC. Now, like, okay, whether that's... hang on, hang on, hang on. Master, with all due respect, considering we have someone on the panel who is black and who is involved in sex work, do you think you're the best person to be addressing this topic no, right now? No, absolutely not, of course. Mm. Mother said, is um, there anything along those yeah. lines you'd like to say just quickly before Master Chief finishes his opening statement? Well, I, oh, no, I didn't. Uh, I, I think that his thing is perfectly fine. We should probably not be replacing people's names with uh, with weird, like, fetishist stereotype yeah. shit, yeah, right? Like, that'd be, like, that's fucking yeah, weird. Th that'd be great, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, I just, I wanted to make sure that the person whose actual lived experience it is gets a chance to speak on the issue as opposed to it just being glossed oh, over. Fair. And I if apologize for the framing of that. Oh no, dude, it's fine. I, I will say there are, there are weirdos who um, are also black who find that sort of shit empowering, but like, I, I can't, like, I can't police them. 
I, I just would hope that you would, uh, you know, uh, take a look at that. Uh, maybe think about why do the you psychology only that, care about yeah. it? Yeah, like maybe think about like how come, what about, why are we only, I guess you could say, quote unquote, sexy? Why not handsome or beautiful or something yeah, like that? Right. Why is yeah, there only one type of way, one type of black hey, man Gina, that is you. Going in well. any way viewed as desirable? How are you doing? Hmm, yeah, good point. Mastery, continue with your opening statement. Sorry, Bella. Yeah, no, just to clarify, when I said lived experience, because I didn't phrase this very well, I meant uh, in terms of like my experience with, you know, uh, not ethical non-monogamy, uh, that kind of stuff, not, you know, obviously with being a person of color, because I do not have that experience. Um, but I have seen um, people oh, of color within the community, like, relay that kind of, um, like, that conversation that happens from time to time. That would be a, you know, a prominent example um, that I could point to with that. Um, I think it's kind of a case by case basis thing and like what the context of it is. But generally yeah. speaking, I think we should be actively like pushing back against, um, you know, problematic framings, even if they are more mild, because that's the only way we Maybe change uh, the culture. And I think if we had to like kind of generally assess like how big of a problem this is, this is much more of a problem in terms of people being oppressed, um, you know, dehumanization issues like that, as opposed to, you know, someone having to think more carefully about their language. Um, so yeah, I guess that'd be my opening statement there. Okay. Does anybody have anything from the opening statements they would like to address? I know they were a bit chaotic. I'm sorry about that. I would love to just start out with this idea. And I'm not saying that, uh, that propaganda is necessarily a bad thing. I'll, I'll be the first person to tell you that, you know, America has a propaganda problem. We don't do enough stuff oh, like sure, we did in the seventies sure. with, yeah trying to treat people correctly on tv so that we can set a good example um but at what point at what point do you go from portrayal to propaganda when you insist and insist and insist on positive portrayal so in the nicest most possible way i can say this everything everything whether it's a two minute advert or a one and a half minute meme song or whatever everything you will see is propaganda in some well, shape or you way can, or you can get to the minutia about that everything is propaganda about at the very least the mindset of the person who made it it is that but i mean largely i mean like oh, no, even as... even like demonstrably right mm. so say you're watching tv and commercials come on you'll don't do that again <laughs> you'll um you'll see like a Gillette advert that's like, oh yeah, we're great for trans men too. Or you'll see like a Range Rover advert that's like we're great for all the family or whatever. Every single tiny one of those is some form of propaganda. Whether it's overtly pro capitalist propaganda, which it usually is, or whether it's oh yeah. We do this thing for rainbow capitalism while shifting a side eye at our transphobic colleagues where we won't mention. And I wanna I want I do wanna go back a little bit to like this idea that uh Yeah, I believe that. Sorry if I'm if I'm monopolizing, but I wanna go back to this idea that we're yeah, not no, just talking no about politics. like I agree with mainstream that, media. Sure. We've also gotta talk about like minutia media, like like local media. Understand. Um, I'm gonna let somebody else speak. Yeah, I think there are varying degrees of um, of like intensity of propaganda. Um, I think all all art, like I am very much of the opinion that all art is political. There is no such thing as non political art, and in fact, art that claims or tries to be apolitical is often some of the most political art out there. Um, I do think that like. Uh, I do want to touch on that idea of like like positive portrayals versus like non positive portrayals, and it's a it's a really interesting thing because um you get stuff like uh, I mean there's been a number of like really really great video essays you can watch on 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 this specific subject which is like um like LGBT portrayal in Disney movies for example is just like they're they're always villains. They're always oh, yeah, villains. Like the history of queer coding, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the whole history of queer coding, exactly. And it's 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 really wild how much that continues, like, and how far back it goes, and how 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 much it's still prevalent to this day. I mean, we have video games where the only openly 
queer character is going to be the villain. And it's just like, oh, oh, oops, it happened again. And usually it's not necessarily this idea that like, oh, we are going to specifically, you know, gay people bad, therefore villain. It's just this idea of like, it's been so ingrained in that like, um, like, gender um a, like atypical gender presentation um is is somehow sign of something dark or wrong and that gets baked in for so long that it, it starts to self-perpetuate and i think it's really important that we do look at that um because i do think it's important that we be able to t have stories where you know they're not like uh i don't they're not like flattened by the idea that you can only have good characters be queer or whatever. But right now, it's the opposite. Right now, people are so, they're so baked in in their portrayal their, or they're in their understanding of what a, what a queer character or, um, or a trans character or a gay character looks like on screen that they can almost not see outside of this sort of negative light. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on that one. Yeah, sorry. that's that's totally fair. Sorry, Kobe had his hand up first. Oh, sorry. I will okay. get I to you and Zan. Yeah, I wanted to echo something that uh, that uh, Johnny said, which is that uh, I think this is this 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 conversation exists at a very interesting kind of intersection, which is we're talking about things like mo like video games, which are massive, sometimes billion dollar or I don't know, billion dollar, million dollar enterprises that are with you know, funded by corporations, but also video games can be done by like literally just like some people in their spare time. You know what I mean? Like like something like Starbound or Starbound. Not sorry, but, um, Stardew Valley is made by one person and then some extra help, right? And so I think that there is, um, like, you know, I kind of feel like I have a different opinions about different kinds of art kind of bit with that, right? Like I would be much more open and much more forgiving if I'm reading, like, let's say a web comic I really like, but that's literally just done by like one person that maybe has like a yikesy portrayal of something. Uh, because it, I don't know, it, it feels like there's... Um, the like you know, the incentive of maybe why they're doing it, uh, th these kind of things is different. While if I'm watching a Marvel movie, which is like a mul which is like huge, massively you know political thing because it is just there's so much money and so much uh, kind of you know hierarchy there and power there, uh, I'm going to be much more critical because I, I feel like there's much more of a kind of a commercial element to something like a Marvel movie or a Microsoft video game than it would be like a you know like an art like a art project that I I, I watch on YouTube or you know a comic or something. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's, that's fair. fair. Yeah, uh, sheep. You wanted to say something, then Zanzi, and then we'll open it back up. I just wanted to sort my dick as the uh, film student. Uh, I just wanted to um, point out that a one. lot of the history behind the um, not the only one behind the queer coding and all that sort of thing uh, does date back to the beginning of the film industry with the Hayes Code and things like that, because um, a lot of that. Well, well I'll just. Um, Three of the main principles of the Hayes Code was that uh, no picture shall be produced that will lower the moral standards of those who see it. Hey, thanks for um, the follow, okay, Which, me, which obviously it. at the time would have included homosexuality uh, and and all kinds of uh, queer um, representation. And as well as that, there was stuff like um, correct standards of life subject only to the requirements of drama shall be pre prevent, uh, presented. And no natural or human law shall be ridiculed, nor shall sympathy be created for its violation. So um, during, for a very, very long time, you know, sort of literally decades, the, it was essentially impossible for filmmakers or, or um, anyone really to create There's media that would have included um, uh, uh, people who weren't who were uh, non cishet basically uh, and i think that a, la a large oh, part of it you, does Kaymore, I stem that. from that because obviously for That's the really longest time film was the mass media or, or the biggest um sort of branch mm -hmm. of entertainment um Maybe and sometimes. and in order but to put in people who are uh, who are non cishet basically what what filmmakers would do that is that they me, code them in, in such a way that the you know, audience would understand without without explicitly breaking the rules. And one way to do that was to make them the villain, um, because obviously if if the villain is is the gay guy and then at the end the gay guy gets killed, that's technically uh, sort of within the rules because it's condemning the lifestyle or and or whatever. Um, and it's just because it was the film industry was like that in its infancy and that was the major um sort of uh, media platform at the time it's just the rest of our mass media has, has just expanded on that and we've just sort of never sort You've of managed hydrated. to get out of that basically because it was around for so long yeah makes sense Zanzi, go yeah 
and just to tie together what Demon Mom and Sheep was saying, that um, I, I think this can kind of peek behind the, the looking glass for a moment as well into see kind of like the general attitude within society because um, a, a basic belief I have about media is that media cannot be divorced from the society in which it is created of because course, it is made by people who existed in those societies. So they're always going to bring their biases with them, but those biases are driven by this cultural inertia that's driven by kind of like a, a cultural hegemony of uh, like a quote-unquote common sense of the right way to be a person living in a society. So filmmakers, artists, uh, everybody who makes media um, and they have like a limited amount of time to uh, tell you who the quote-unquote bad people are, what they have to do is they have to, in like very quick succession, put something on screen that alienates you from them so that yeah. you view them Tess as something different to you so you have that cue to see them as being the antagonist too. because their the interests host. don't align with yours within a patriarchal system the hegemonic value is that heteronormativity so they might accidentally dri dip into something alienating to that which is the counter hegemonic idea of LGBT so they'll end up getting coded without realising what they're doing at all and the point I'm getting at here is if we don't notice we're doing that we can't find it at all yeah that's fair right i'm gonna open it back up jake you're moderating because i need to dive to the bathroom super quickly because fucking of course i do i'll be right back go on whoever wants to pick it up go it's an anarchy stream now <laughs> it's all <laughs> anarchy <laughs> they're, doing, they're doing a lot of like other countries and unfortunately <laughs> we don't uh, is uh, we don't fund the fucking arts at all in this country. We spend no fucking yeah. money on this stuff. Canada does this so much. This is an example of this. There are three game or two okay. games I can, I can think of that were like funded by the Canadian government. The Long Dark and another one called like My Winter Friend. I don't know. It's a it's a it's about like an Inuit person um, hanging out with like a fox or something like this. And both those both those games exist because the Canadian government wanted to have they want to have better representation for their society for the we'll native tribes. We'll save this for the questions so they, afterwards. They do that. Uh... I think we should do that. America. You when you say, around? wait, wait, do you mean America doesn't fund the arts? Yeah, because America funds there. NPR. America funds NPR, yeah. which is a but huge, a huge art producer. But also it uh, it depends entirely on the state because I I am in Louisiana and we are a service industry and arts based that, economy that it when it comes to actual normal ass people when it comes to the rich people that's definitely petrochemicals and things like that and forestry but when it comes to normal ass people it's like service industry and arts so we got an excellent opportunity uh year after year to like have things in the governor's mansion if we if we entered an art contest crazy shit like that you know people people making um, it depends on the city, of course, but people in high school making movies and stuff like that, like that happens in, no, in that's perfectly this state fine. and we are no apologies for super that. excited about it. But at the same time, this state in particular is literally sinking. Hey, so, follow, like, John what are y'all going to do? What's the rest of America going to do when New Orleans is underwater? <laughs> Well, yeah. Yeah. Like a there. Issuing grants competitively is also very, very distinct from providing either a national or state degree of funding for a specific project. Yeah, I just looked this up, and only like fifteen percent of P of uh, the PBS budget, which is like NPR's and PBS, only fifteen percent of that comes from public funding. That most of it and comes the rest from like, like uh, corporate and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. Keep yeah, in like mind that's, too that that's uh, changed uh, over the years. Um, like yeah. PBS used to be yeah. funded considerably more. Um, public Works was like hugely hugely funded and a lot of those cuts started mm -hmm. coming through in like the 90s into the 2000s where there was just cut after cut after cut and it's like it's almost un unbelievable because uh, it's changed so fast that some of us grew up with uh like pbs at it like at double its funding and then now like people who are going to be seeing a lot of that pbs media and whatnot or, or npr media um are getting a severely weakened version of it um, as a result of really rapid changes that have happened over the last, you know, couple decades. PBS used to make the most bomb fucking kid shows. They're so True. fucking, they're so, inter like, mm. so interesting and creative. And even though we're talking about here, it, it's, you know, shows like Sesame Street have been famous for doing things like having uh, kids with disabilities on. Having kids, for example, they had an episode, I think, maybe three or four years ago, where they had, yes, they talked they about will. having an incarcerated yes, parent. They will, and they had a kid on. And when one of the little Muppets was like, hey, you're not a bad person. Your parents aren't a bad person. We all make mistakes. That stuff is like quintessential. That's, that's how we make things better. And they recently get in, well, get in trouble with the conservative media for 
doing something recently. Like, yeah, oh, I, I actually remember remember media it. hates yeah. PBS and NPR perpetually. <laughs> Always. I remember, like, a, I remember like a Ben Garrison cartoon that came out actually right after that that episode came out. There was a, something that Ben Garrison, and it was like our Oscar the Grouch giving a little kid a heroin needle, and it's like this is what your government funding is telling the kids to do. <laughs> yeah, there was when I was about seven or eight years old. There was a publicly funded show, uh, Arthur, and they did an episode. They did an episode much much later in the run where there was an explicit gay couple but Fuck the quarter. around the time slightly before when uh yes, gay marriage was actually uh, yes, legalized in vermont this is the one that mitner just talked about right they did now. an episode where they went to a specific vermont uh, like famous vermont person uh couples home and uh i think it was like a concert venue and they never addressed it specifically but they had a uh, a lesbian couple um, uh, embodied in the cartoon and they did not address that that's what they were, but because they referred to them by their real world names, their real world institution that they were promoting, people lost their shit. <laughs> Arthur was the one that Stephen Crowder was on. Yeah, Stephen Crowder played uh, Brain in, in yeah, Arthur. That's right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's mm-hmm. kind of weird. Yeah. Back I didn't in the day. Yeah. 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 In childhood. Did not know Stephen Crowder was on Arthur. Yeah, wow. The yeah, weird. Isn't did it? an episode that talked about the perception of linear time, and I didn't appreciate that that's what it was about until I was like 19. It's the kind recent cock <laughs> from the conservatives about Sesame Street, uh, like the most recent within the last sort of three or four years, has been because they now have Julia as a permanent, uh, like, Muppet, mm-hmm. and Julia? she is autistic. Like, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like Wait, extremely autistic. autistic. Okay. Uh, the conservatives would have you not believe so, but yes. Yeah. Um, I thought, yeah. I think that's what Sesame, Sesame Street, Street I, I thought it was explicit. Yeah, the, the conservatives lost their shit. Like, Sesame Street were always explicit about the fact that Julia was autistic. Yeah. Always. And Julia, to the point where, like, the character was explaining the things that she couldn't do in comparison to normal kids. And the conservatives lost their shit. I didn't hear about that. That's, I, uh, I'll never, I'll never stop being surprised by um, conservatives. Just because they're public. Why? Public. Mindlessly <laughs> evil. Just. Why? What's the point? Like, why get mad about <laughs> the fact that people with disabilities exist? You know. I'm it's going to my happy place of remembering Neil Patrick Harris as the shoe fairy too. on Sesame Street. Go on, Zanzi, um, what were you going to say? Oh, I say it, it's because they need society to be completely against them and all their values so they can yeah, justify the having funding. a fraction of Genuinely. the population I can talk about it more a stranglehold too. on government to dictate to the rest of the world what they should and shouldn't do so their no. sensibilities won't get offended. Stop it. I hate it. It upsets me. <laughs> I hate it. Unfortunately, it's accurate. <laughs> Galilad, no. you've been quiet for a bit. Do you have anything you want to add? Not so far. I've mostly just been listening because... Uh, no, not not so far as really brought in a particular opinion. I've got any strong take on you know, like the Sesame Street thing. Yeah, I'm I'm not a conservative, I'm a liberal. I don't give a fuck. I, I'm glad that Sesame Street want to portray things better. Good for them, but it doesn't bother me. I don't watch children's cartoons, nor do, I don't have any kids either. So I don't, you know, this is not a relevant issue to me in any level. It kind of is, and I'll tell you for why. So, you're not a straight man. As such, the attitudes that are carried on into the next generation matter for you and the way you are seen as you age by society as it grows around you. And if that's the case, is... then I would argue then, if, if, if we're going to use that kind of numbers, then I would say the current societal trajectory is going the wrong way then. You know, we're seeing in Ireland, for example, I, I don't know about the rest of it, but I can only talk for Ireland. In Ireland, we're seeing that there's actually a reduction in acceptance for uh, LGBT people. And the only thing, in my opinion, uh, this is nothing to do with media. Media does not really affect people's views that much, I think. I think that we often overblow it. I think that people will very publicly say what they say. But in private views, and the views actually matter when they go, for example, to the ballot box, in reality, people are not very affected by media. They have very strongly held beliefs, hmm, and media rarely fancy. changes it. In my opinion, not everybody uh, watches all media. Yeah, I mean, there's like say, is, I, I kind of have to draw a contradiction to what you're saying though, because if you're saying that media doesn't really reflect the views of the Irish people, but their actual like um, their electoral results reflect their views, 
I, oh, I, I didn't say that. want to point out that same-sex marriage. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Really I didn't say any of that. <laughs> okay, that did kind of sound what you like what you were getting. At. No, what, what yeah. I was getting at was was mm. at the uh, the ballot boxes as is an example of how people reflect their more true views. And but we all my point was that media is not same sex marriage and the abortion referendum. And when you track them back through the last few times we've had the chance to actually vote in those issues, we've seen overwhelmingly nearly three, uh, uh, three quarters. So like the legislative uh, voice of the Irish electorate seems to be very in favor towards um, an equality of rights in that regard. Yeah. So that's the point I'm getting at where that that seems to be an expression of the public where um i have heard the statistic that um the irish public is uh, less favorable to lgbt people i just i haven't looked into the source i'm not 100 percent sure uh, on that one i've seen a few sources and it seems to be a general trend around the west uh, the western world and it tends to be particularly amongst gen z where this this is happening which is why i'm bringing this up as an issue because well, gen I mean, z are the most susceptible we... people to modern media Here's here's what I would say um, in response to that, which is um, I don't know, like I I understand where people like where people are sort of coming from in the idea that like media there's this idea of like uh, an obsession online with like culture war stuff, but I I I, sim I don't think that that means that media is less impactful. It's just differently impactful than a lot of like. Um, sort of culture war liberals um, would would sort of frame it in my mind. Because, I mean, I don't think that we can... I don't know. I, I feel like... Uh, and this is a hard point to do because it's such a, a huge topic. But, like, I, I feel like it would be foolish for us to write off out of hand the, the impact that media can have on shaping electoral opinions, um, like, very severely. For example, here in the here in the states, um, Rush Limbaugh's domination of 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 the radio waves absolutely has changed the, the course of politics in our country. In many states, the only shows that you can listen to are right wing talk shows, and if that's what you're hearing as effective right wing propagandists all day, every day at the workplace, you're going to inevitably pick up some of those. You're going to only hear the arguments, the only going to hear the narrative of one side. And um Since I mean our media extends hey. that on TV as well. Well yeah, yes of course. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, like I have a very simple uh demonstration of this that you'll probably remember from around the time we were kids, Galalat, right? How many people in school did you hear after the Podge and Rod show started and the Halloween special started use the word queer in a derogatory context because I heard a fucking lot. Hmm. I think this is where we had a different experience growing up because when I was growing up in surprisingly conservative for Scotland, there wasn't that much hey. anti a publicly stated views. Oh jeez, oh. there was loads of it in fucking nature. Sure. Well, in Wisconsin, there was generally sexuality was a very private thing, and everybody knew who was mm. who was and wasn't gay, and because it was a very real thing to people, shit you know like what goes on in Podge and Raj, and like Podge and Raj using like fucking shitty language, didn't really bother anyone, because the gay lads who were there didn't care, and the people who were straight and didn't want to give all that much of a take on it because their concern wasn't well, Padre and Rogers using the language they're like, homosexuality was a crime till a short period after I was born you know, yeah. their concern was we want equal marriage and then that's what they pushed on and they got it and then they got sorry, they got fucking the, the, the realization of a partnership, sorry any equal marriage which I was around for yeah, but... even, even if I'll uh I will agree, though, on one thing which uh, was raised earlier, which was uh, you know, about like the radio waves and how some very stupid opinions can seep through. I always, have, I always remember I have a neighbor who unironically made the, well, if we legalize gay marriage, what about the sheep argument? That was a, that sort of argument was pushed on radio waves um, like all over where I grew up. I grew up in a very rural state here in the United States. Um, grew up with my, my dad would just put on conservative radio, talk radio, literally Limbaugh, a couple of other, um, 
really like regional people who were would nobody would know outside of the region probably um but that was the sort of yeah. stuff that was pumped out all the time and so i grew up with these sort of assumptions as just i thought that they were normal like that's just what i thought it was because that was the only thing i'd ever heard and there had never been any other um counter narrative that i encountered until much later in my life um, yeah, I think the, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. I, I also just to just to sort of finish that thought off um one thing i think that media does actually greatly and this is where i think there is credence um and importance in this idea of a culture war like a lot of it um and this is where i disagree with um some people who say oh the culture war shit is bullshit um i actually think there's a lot of um importance in there in that like for people who grow up in a um hyper indoctrinated vacuum even like a, a a portrayal that shocks you can actually be even if it's, it doesn't shock anybody else but if it if it is something you've never seen before can actually be absolutely um life changing i mean i remember mm -hmm. the first documentary i i still to this day i was like a kid and i just happened to be staying up late and watching a discovery or uh tlc or something documentary about intersex people and I remember that documentary to this day because I had never even heard of such a thing before because I grew up in this like extreme <laughs> Christian environment where in order to keep you in that faith, in that really rigid faith, you must be controlled from all forms of, of uh, you know, contact. Your with mind them. must stay pure. Yeah, from yeah, that quite, quite thing. literally. Yes. Yeah, because it Absolutely. is. It's like this idea that like um, they very much believe and I mean, they're wrong about the the like the sort of spiritual truth of it, but they are correct mm -hmm. in that these ideas take root in your mind and you can't get them out once they're in there. You know of this thing. It's like taking a bite of the apple, you know? Um, I have a question for any artists on the on the panel, like about about how you choose work. I know that we've got uh, 36 over here. Um, Mama <laughs> say. Someone, someone said that there was at least one sex worker on the panel, and uh, I know that like that sort of emotional and physical labor can also be considered a form of art, so I would include that. Um, when you're choosing, just as a general survey, when you're choosing uh, what you do as far as artwork, for me it would be taking like photo shoots from uh, certain photographers or, or working on certain like background shit things like that do you take into account culture do you take into account the narrative that you are spreading when you uh engage in these in these projects or do you just like take the money and run because that's okay too yeah um one of the things i was gonna say um i mean it was very much the same with the catholic church right in ireland oh. uh, from just after the famine up until quite recently yep. i was going over on stream the other day uh the mother and baby homes and magdalene laundries and someone in chat turned around and legitimately said well they were adults or young adults why didn't they just leave or why did they subscribe to the religion or whatever because you don't know anything and else. i was sitting there going that else. is the stupidest fucking question i have ever been asked do you think young girls Just move in the head. 70s yeah. and before, like yeah. the latest Magdalene Laundry didn't close until 1996, right? Do you think young girls, like teenage girls who had gotten themselves pregnant or who had been sent to the Magdalene Laundries with their parents being told they're training centers, do you really think that they had the freedom and the capability to go, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm out? Because they fucking didn't. Yeah. Those yep. that escaped were very few right. and far between. Yeah. Mm. And one of the one of the things about the context of the laundries back in like the eighteen sixties and seventies that I think people forget about is that they were essentially the asylums for people hey, who that's good idea. Not get your skin for, well cared uh, for. Impaired enough. Um the effects of the famine and the changing to the um the the inheritance laws meant that there was a lot of people millions of people who had nothing to their name and there was no ability for whoever inherited the farm to look after them so like the industrial schools the workhouses the workshops the laundries all of these different things were basically Mother and baby homes I, I can't believe i forgot about them yeah no. um these were basically just like camps because there was nowhere else in the country for them 
Yeah, pretty much. They were internment camps yeah. and so ended up very asked, quickly being genocide camps. Yeah. So if, if somebody asks, why didn't they just leave? They are so ignorant of the concept of the yeah. context surrounding. We can talk about that too after. So, so ignorant. Like, because I think that's a good topic and one that I know a lot about. Part of and the reason the Catholic times. Church ended up having so much power. And this is one of the things I had to explain, like, really, really after. break it yeah, down. Absolutely. I'll it's talk because about that some. It's something I England about essentially on, I went, about fuck your hand, let yourself. I think it's important. So. And the only thing we had were the Catholic run workhouses. That's it. And people then decided, oh, well, the Catholic Church must, must be great. And the vast proportion of people who survived the famine did so from working in a workhouse mm-hmm. and living in a workhouse. Um, so Catholicism kind of caught on and spread like wildfire and very quickly had everybody under the thumb. I uh, don't know exactly what you guys, uh, but somebody in my chat is is from your area and said, what can you ask Kez what the movie is called about the Magdalene Laundries? The Magdalene Sisters. And I strongly recommend okay. you don't watch it because it's 85% bollocks. Ah. Oh. If you want to learn about the Magdalene Laundries, look on YouTube for um, a documentary called The Forgotten Maggies. Sick. It's a I really good documentary. That sounds good. Yeah. I, I, you know me, Zanzi. I don't cry. That shit made me cry on stream. Wow, damn. And the thing is, do you know what's sick? Being someone who was oh my God. raised female talk about that. and socialized to be a woman... Even though the Magdalene, the latest Magdalene Laundry closed in ninety six, I was oh, still God. threatened with industrial schools because the latest one of them didn't Damn. close until twenty ten. We'll I was still threatened that, so. with mother yeah. and baby homes. Well, maybe give that a watch. Yeah. If you get pregnant as a teenager, you're gonna end up in one of these places. My and... mom did that one time, <laughs> Oh no 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 no! You do not understand. The mother no, and baby um... homes in Ireland. Like there was one, um, yeah, there was one hey, recently. Yeah, they go on, go on, go for it. So I was in, so the main mother baby home that was publicly announced was in Tume. I was in Tume when it when the news broke. I was actually working in the town. And I was listening to the local radio, and uh, you can imagine, you know, working with my father who was worried about Catholic, and we. We were listening to the local radio, eating a bit of breakfast, and uh, and the news came through that uh, 3,000 babies' corpses had been discovered in the septic tank in a mother and baby home in that town uh, because the sisters who had run the institute would try and sell these babies to America. And if they couldn't sell them, well, into the septic tank you went and you would drown in it. Minor okay. correction. Um, actually, two minor corrections. One, that septic tank that the bodies were found in was disused at the time. Thank you. So even worse, sorry. The nuns were coming down the steps, down this massive tunnel, and laying these little tiny swaddled bundles from the ages of somewhere between thirty-five fetal warning. weeks and two years on the steps, dead, leaving them there. Half of them did didn't even have we proper fucking death certificates. Uh, in the Chua Mother and Baby Home, it was 800 bodies throughout the baby homes uh, all the way across Ireland. They're expecting it to be between three and 5,000 bodies of babies, small Sorry, babies. Sorry, everybody. I didn't know it was going to So again, um, this is one of the darkest chapters of Irish history, in my opinion, or none. Um, but anyway, Sorry. <laughs> just just to feel the anger a little bit um the pope came to ireland about two years ago and he refused to go to june to bless the ground or whatever it was he refused to go there and they were run by uh catholic monastery or not monasteries catholic orders of nuns uh, and well, we he just tried it, to worry. wash his hands completely of it and say nothing to do with us he um outright ended up calling for the bodies to be exhumed and buried properly in consecrate consecrated ground there has been since uh, there has been uh, an investigation launched by the Irish government. They've gotten DNA evidence back that proves that there's 790 something bodies yeah. in that se- se- that single septic I didn't tank have alone. Of this part. God knows how many there are in the other septic tanks. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I missed it. Or, what was the point of these homes? Were these like asylums? Kind no, of. They, essentially, no, they were, they were uh, 
they were for fallen Sorry. women. Essentially, women with children who didn't have husbands. Yeah. yeah. If you got pregnant out of wedlock, you were sent to a mother and baby home. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter whether you were in a, lo- uh, a long term relationship and planning to get married but couldn't afford it yet. It doesn't matter whether you were raped or it was through incest or anything else. You were packed up and fucked off to a mother and baby home. Yep. And you had no say in it. You were starved. You were forced to work. Very often, they would trade women between mother and baby home and Magdalene and laundry. If they were young women who'd managed to get pregnant, they'd train them between mother and baby home, Magdalene and laundry and industrial school, which is a whole other hell of horrors. Um, it was... It's a lot. It's a lot. It's too much to go into in the context of this stream, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I, I have been. Say, I have I been covering say, do it. Want, uh, do we want an out from this, <coughs> or do we want to keep going on to it? Because I actually do have an out. Yeah. Um. I maybe this is a thing for a stream at another time. Uh. Yeah. Let me just address something in chat quickly. No, Scrubs. This isn't like the Catholic Church as an entire global entity. This is the Irish Catholic Church. This is the four orders of nuns that essentially ran Ireland at the time. This is them. This has very little to do with the Catholic Church and the rest of the world. And the only reason these homes and these laundries and these industrial schools existed around the rest of the world yeah, is because when allegations worry. started to come out against nuns, they would be moved to other countries to escape them by the church who have to cover these things up to save their own arses. Yeah, it is. Um, Don't worry, and then the nuns would go off on their own and they'd open them in other countries. Um, yeah, just a, an important thing to remember about all this is because this is about um, uh, institutional abuses of a very powerful social body um, that just happened to have a very, very no, convincing peace shield Did you just in tune the in? Uh, yeah. form of a papal co- coat of arms. Very dark. Um, if it wasn't the church, it would have been somebody else. And it was just the unique circumstances of Ireland they were the post-war about, um, that the church had the available yeah, yeah. Um, power um, to they were fill talking those social about homes genocide. left behind by the British government. Yeah, we were talking about Abject genocide. refusal to deal with one of their provinces going through a famine that decimated the recently. population by nearly a so. half. But um, one of the things I that I think joking, is important keep... in the topic of the famine, just as <laughs> nobody could have predicted that, that it went this way, the Catholic yeah, Church was soon, able so. to basically, uh, or uh, Gala, do you want to say something? Uh, I just like to say, like, look, I, I get where you're coming at that, and fair dues for this very important topic, but we are really miles away from where we started. Well, let's see where he goes with us. You're not sure, going to shut up. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was saying that in terms of like that if, if you look at how the church basically made people dependent on them yeah, they basically on did what um, local socialist groups and local anarch- anarchist groups have been telling everybody to do just do food runs give people who have nothing something and then you can have them look to you to say how do I get out of this shit um, j- just like give people who have nothing something like something to believe in oh, and nice. like Budget you can then time, help them immeasurably then just don't abuse that Hope trust you, uh, stay safe um, but in terms of like that how do we take something like um, like in terms of getting us back to the overall topic in terms of media um, are we tackling it in terms of like institutional media or like individual media like are we are we looking at like um, Good, studios Good that news. will have hundreds of staff producing well, two or three streets. things uh, a day or a year or whatever or somebody with a blog who has like exceptionally um, like big a little language um, there's yeah. a few different ways to approach the perspective of how does uh, culture influence and the degree of uh, responsibility we want to give to critiquing them for like their stereotypes, ableism, um, a kind of like offensive representation, all these different things. Um, it's a good time to reorchestrate that conversation and think about what angle we want to have for it. I hate to try and like uh, revert the conversation, but I um I was wondering if anybody wanted to answer no the question Chazley earlier of ball. like if uh, if there are any like artists on the panel, independent artists who who actively take into account, um, like control the control the media has when they take certain jobs. Um, just as an example, I uh, got out of traditional Way worse. You'd, you'd um, sorry, I keep messing like up. photo shoot modeling, and I I am looking for different representation because I felt very strongly that. Uh, the representation I had was putting me into these very like standard roles of of skinny white girl, 
and that that was not actively helping any of the culture that would follow like with my little sister seeing me do this and oh, okay. and anything like that like i i want what much more like different representation even if that nice. means me not being good uh the in front of the camera even if that means like transitioning to to directing or something yeah i can talk on that a little bit um so can i because I, uh, I used to do freelance um, writing and the number of stuff that I like the number of types of jobs that I would get was all over the place. But um, there's two sort of examples of how I would approach it, um, depending on what I was given. And I think there's varying levels of comfort with this. For me, um, I, as you all know, I'm a little spicy. I like to, to push boundaries and stuff. So one of the things I would do when I was um, working freelance and in blogs is uh, like, I mean, I remember I, I wrote... Uh, specifically, this is like really minor, but I think it's something that's important is when I would write um, blogs for um, like, God, there was a, there were jewelry companies I did this for. And I would always make sure that when I'm, when I'm in, talking in an article, I would talk about various types of, 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 of partners that you can have. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could have a, a gay relationship. Maybe you're buying a ring for your husband or your wife, or imagine that, you know, like, and I would try to literally bring that into a lot of my articles. So my articles would always have, um, you know, not just assumed hetero couples in, in, in articles that I would write for jewelry and wedding companies and stuff like this. Um, and I, I, I to be fair, I would never consult the clients on that. I would just do it and they never seem to care. Um, but also, this also happened uh, to a greater degree on um, a, another job that I worked, which was where uh, for this job, the whole goal was to sort of document. Um, we were supposed to sort of create a uh, repository of, of historical sites that was going to be overlaid onto like a Google Maps plugin so that you could find historical sites next to you. And I don't know the whole composition of the team, but one of the great weak spots that they had in there was um, coverage of LGBT history, coverage of the history of slavery, um, coverage of the history of the Civil War, like like actual coverage that wasn't just sort of like Ulysses S. Grant was cool. And so what I would try to do is like I spent a lot of time specifically going to places and filling out that type of history in these areas. So people who were using the app would go and find different types of history that they may have never come in contact with. They would be just as excited. And of course, I would put tons of love into making um, making uh, these articles interesting to people so they'd have a reason to go there. And that's like a really – again, this is pretty minor, but that's what I did within the um, within the scope of, of the work that I took. And I think it's something that people can do, that you can actually influence a lot of things that way if you have a perspective or if you have the intention to go there. Um, and, and that, I think, uh, starts to break that sort of implicit baked-in bias that we were talking about before. Um, but yeah, that's just one. Uh, Zanzi, you've got your hand up. Uh, to answer John, uh, to answer Johnny Scarlett's uh, question, um, I think the key aspect is yes, I do think people have an obligation to try, um, in some way, create ripples in the environment around them so as to change things. But I think it needs to be contextualized into one key aspect, and that's influence. Um, how much influence do you actually have over the people around you? And the degree of responsibility for doing that change, I think, is directly proportional to that level of influence. Um, somebody who is like an international supermodel in like one of the top 10 most recognizable faces on the planet. Um, th like there's a reason we have the term like influencer or even celebrity. Like celebrities are people who are famous for being famous. Um, th I think they carry with them enormous responsibilities to personally do things because they carry system wide change where their ripples are enormous. And we fall into the mistake of kind of like indulging this kind of like liberal affect of the idea of like that we are all our own personal individual islands if we all personally do these small changes where I think those changes are determined by your influence where if you have very little influence in society rather than doing the change generate more influence in your society so that when you do Maybe enact yes, the change you have more influence like so uh, what you're saying is do it the classical way do it do it the way that is best to make money first and then and then like affect change after you've already done that i don't no, think if, that if you're that in society necessarily... and you have very little influence i think you're better pressed pressuring those with influence yeah. to do it 
um, that energy will achieve better change by pressuring those Good, with gone. influence it, it, I to think, actually I think, I think do you caught it. the influencing. Um, either position yourself into a position of influence or use your energy to pressure those with influence. Um, it, 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 it harkens back and it reminds me of the... Um, the climate change argument of like if we all individually turn off our lights or we can pressure the global billionaires to do their fucking part um we need to trade off the difference between um influence versus uh versus change um if you don't have enough influence to make change you need to use your effort to cause changes in the people with okay more That's so kind of where I'm getting at. yeah and people who make art are generally people with influence who are trying to make change so like people who make art uh how how do you choose your um like that was the initial question yeah yeah I, well i i don't I make art Marvel's so i don't know it. how to do it um i i did trail off though so uh you might have missed the thing i said at the very beginning which is i do think people mm. have an obligation to do it but the degree to which they use that okay. is proportional to their influence if you have little influence i don't think you have that much of an obligation if you have a lot of influence your oh an obligation okay it's proportional to like those with little influence don't have to do that much those with a lot of influence have to do a lot and your objectives that if you're climbing that ladder and actually being financially rewarded, your obligation to cause change is increased because of that. Right. Uh, Jake's had his hand up for a while. Right, Go well, on. Sorry, uh, Mama say it was, was uh, if I'm saying that right, sorry. Uh, was, yeah, you're uh, saying it right. But Mama say was also stuff in his face, so he can wait a minute. You go first. <laughs> Okay, uh, then, then, uh, just answering as uh, just answering as an artist, I I try to monitor Scraft. much more carefully, especially in the last few years since I've become more uh, more class conscious and more radicalized. No, that's how, not that's what not I do. True. What You're wrong impacts about representation and impacts the audience I'm working with, and specifically Dead wrong. in the artist field, I'm working in a musical theater. There's a lot of white supremacy in musical theater on the East Coast oh. of the U.S. and especially in the Northeast, like New York and uh, New England scene, especially. So, for example, when I'm working at a place in uh, New Hampshire and we're doing various productions that, that are either just sort of neutrally fun for children to perform and I'm and I'm uh, music directing and teaching for a youth program. And then we have the Disney Peter Pan Jr. production come in with what makes the brave man brave rather than the original title of the song and literally teaching children to chant gibberish as a facsimile for a native american chant that is of course yeah. forever so yay and that was the kind Pokemon of thing that time 700 yeah Oh yeah, and so th those are the kinds of things that I've, I've changed how I interact with that and how uh, and how I try to let my art influence that. And the, in the New Hampshire example specifically, I really needed the money, so I didn't make a stink. So I was very much yeah. bad and part of the problem in that envi in that environment. And then I leaned on the rest of the shows being very good and being something that we would actually be proud of. And I told everyone I worked for to their face, I think this is a shit song. I feel dirty doing it and I don't think you should have included it in the show. And I used that kind of language and I didn't get fired and I still got paid. So that was the extent of my resistance. But then the same musical is being used in educational groups across New York City and in the areas near New York that I teach in. And I've taken a much harder line since then on, I will not do this song or we will do what NBC did which was when NBC did a Peter Pan adaptation, they actually brought in an indigenous lyricist and anthropologist to try and develop a specific way better. chant yeah. and language that would be able to reflect the <clears throat> something slightly less horrifying, but allow them to keep the same yeah, music that they had the license for. So I said, yeah. that's the compromise I'm willing to make. And when none of them would budge on that, I said, okay, I won't teach the number. And they said, if you won't teach it, you'll be fired. And in both of those instances, I just kept claiming every time we were supposed to rehearse the number as part of our day schedule that, oh, we just hadn't had the time. And then when we got to SITS Probe and Tech, I said, oh, we haven't had the time to rehearse it. They don't know the number at all. And oh. I was able to get the number cut from the show. So that's not a risk I would have been Based. able to take financially when I was in New Hampshire. But those kinds of things in art do very much have an impact. And I've just tried to craft, you're being gear a my, right my professional practice to my practice Almost. a little more. In that's, that respect. And especially yeah. with theater in New England, 
the racist shit is you didn't something even that listen I to a have single thing to that finally recognize way more than I did when I was growing up in Vermont. Come on, you're better than Vermont this piece, So, 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 so white. No, you did not. And yeah. <laughs> but so the, those kinds of practices, you have to balance. Um, uh, like oh, Zanzi said, you have to balance how high, high up the ladder are you, what kind of impact more, are you worry. having, and when I'm teaching yeah. kids, and it's going to be for an audience of other kids that can and adults that can push up into the high hundreds, I should probably do something. Whereas when it's something smaller scale, like uh, a teaching program at an intermediate school out in Long Island, where I'm only working with ten students, and the audience is only going to be their parents, I'm going to be a little less strict and rigorous. But mm -hmm. I also, in that environment, have more flexibility to change the material rather than try and make a point of anything to either the parents or the company. Good boy. Yeah. And you don't have I to make as money, much of a point, but you can at least. Say. Yes, man, you're literally yeah. doing the same thing that okay. you're accusing other people. Mabase, you had your it's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't even entirely think. disagree with you, but you're doing the same Oof. thing. So this one is a uh, is is really rough. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm, I've taken very much so like like me like and my partner have taken a very um hardline stance against like racialized porn shit, and we're both black. So when it comes to like mainstream stuff, that's like that's exactly what Mint Nerd said. He like did. I like I, they haven't worked in like I don't know, dude, like over two years and. I, um, I'm uh, very much the same. You get a lot of the same emails, a lot of the same DMs and stuff like that from the same fucking companies looking for you to to join in this BBC thing, this, the Ebony, that, like, fuck that shit. I, I don't know. So, like, it's a, it, it's rough. It definitely, uh, it definitely hits the pocket, but it, it, it helps the heart. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. But I'm also I'm not gonna judge people who who are still in who are still very much so in the mainstream and who have to do those things in order to get get what they have their needs met. You know it, it you know it happens. It's it's just a, like it's a part of life, sadly. Yeah, something... I think. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, something that I have found really gratifying is that when I work with. Uh, when I work with directors and creators and designers who are people of color, um, that and that's mainly like Creole and Black here in New Orleans, um, I I'm not put into those weird little pockets that I generally am if I take like a a corporate uh commercial or something like that. Um, and that's super gratifying for the heart to know that I have the ability and the and the proximity to uh, choose those jobs and to be like, I'm going to work with more people who are independent like that. Mm. Um, so I would like to hear, because I haven't spoken in a while, from Mashi, Kobe, Sheep, and Demon Mama in that order, if that's okay. Go for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, mic check, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're fine. Go. It's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, um... Ah, fuck. I I had a thought and then my tr thought train derailed. Uh, does anyone want to jump in? <laughs> Demon Maw? I think you said Demon Maw. Uh, Kobe. Actually, I actually Kobe really have sheep. Been saying this. I'm not an artist. I'm not, I don't have any experience in that uh in that field. Everybody's fighting with the sheep. Again, sorry, I'm not I'm not an artist. I've never like worked to anything sort of in in that area. No, but you have uh, got that really obnoxious fucking media studies shit well yeah i mean yeah. <laughs> i mean i guess yeah um everybody's just rat right now it's not really something i've uh Where? given like too much thought to i guess because it's not everybody's something brawling, that, I've really, that i've ever really had to think about i do agree with uh zanzi's point that really it like if if you don't have much influence you're not going to be able to affect much change i think that's just no, the same across that's not what um, it was a lot of craft. society really and i think that um i'm gonna get really mad at you if you do this yeah i don't know I, I guess it's, it's more just sort of we it's a bit like we should we should be trying to influence those with power to actually do something about it mm -hmm. Pieces Demon is being... go ahead yeah um I think I think there's some synthesis to be reached between what we talked about at the beginning, between like what artists individually can do versus like 
um, you know, the systems that are in place. I do think that there's um, I, I do think that that's an important analysis to make, because after all, I mean, the reason why, um, you know, the reason why we have so many issues in media is because there's so much concentrated power in the hands of a few firms or in the hands of a few inv individuals, you know. This is not directly related to the subject, I guess. Or perhaps it maybe is a little bit. But like you have like um like the um Wein Wein Weinstein like Weinstein the guy you know who was just recently you know tried the whole Me Too thing like Harvey yeah Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein I always forget I I kept wanting to say the other one uh, the one that goes on on uh, on Joe Rogan and whatever um but um Harvey Firestein goes on Joe Rogan no I think it's uh his I think it's somebody else with a similar name like Brett or something like that um so but cool. the, the point oh, is um that like there's like these structures are built to be manipulative to make it as easy as possible for the person who has the money to make more money um and oftentimes that means not making any changes at all from whatever the thing that they can um you know they can most easily market even if that change would be a good thing um, I think a lot of artists find themselves in positions where they do have to choose between a paycheck or fighting for something. I mean, and we see this in many ways, not just on matters of representation. We see things like the number of, of, of women in Hollywood who have to um, undergo, you know, extremely uncomfortable sexual situations in order to proceed in their career. Otherwise they stop getting calls. Otherwise they um, get outright punished. So otherwise they get like straight up abused by some people. And these dynamics exist in other ways too. It's just varying degrees of how outspoken it is that these things happen. Um, and I do think that there are, um, I, I, I'm quite sure of it. I mean, hell, we even had an example of this recently in, in the games industry too with the uh, the Ubisoft, Tom Clancy, uh, anti-BLM ad. I don't think everyone on that team was probably comfortable with it, but I doubt they had a choice under this current economy. If you lose a job in the gaming industry right now, you know, that's paying you relatively well and gives you healthcare, you could be in a really bad spot, which means you don't really have the luxury to fight back against something like that. And in that case, I would point that like the artist, though technically they are putting their labor towards something very problematic, is in a bit of a pinch. They have to choose between possibly not being able to feed themselves and their family and or going along with a sort of dictatorially imposed um, plan for how something is going to be developed and made. And so, Under yeah, capitalism. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it is true. Um, these sort of. These structures impose, um, and, and I've actually talked about this on a broader scale in a video that I did talking about the flattening of culture under capitalism, which is something I think that happens. I think that artists have less of a say than they ever would um, at any other, like at almost any other point in history, barring like, like, like abject outlawed, uh, you know, censorship. But we're at a point now where um, there is only money in certain things. It's very hard for most people to find an alternative to say working on a big game project or working on a big film. If you want to have a, 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 any quality of life. And that can put you in a position where you don't really have the ability to fight back effectively. And that's why my approach is always find what you can do. If you find yourself in a position like that, you're not morally bad for being a part of being a piece in a production line. Um, varying of the, of course, there's varying degrees of this. I would argue there are some cases where um, it really is like you really do have to step out of there for your own good and for others' good. But for most cases, when it comes to media, you might be a part of the creation of an imperfect or a problematic um, subject, but just do what you can. Do what you can and don't like, you know, you have to be alive in order to do good. And uh, and capitalism knows this, um, knows that you have to be alive, that you need food and health care in order to keep making the thing that you do. And they leverage that. So I think that there is a there is a synthesis to be had between those two perspectives in my mind. Yeah, I have a perspective on this, actually, that might be a bit different. Um, so I have like two perspectives, three actually perspectives to this. So in my teens, I worked for uh, like a, a stage company. Uh, I I acted, I sung all the time. It was, it was like oxygen to me, like being on stage. Holy shit! Like, yeah. um, and it ended up getting to the point, maybe a year or two into it, where I could no longer keep saying to myself, "Do I stay quiet about the fact that that director just touched my ass again?" Despite the fact that I a minor or only just stopped being a minor 
or that director came on to me or has offered me the lead if I suck his dick or whatever. It is. Kieris is an underrated Or role. do I pack it in That's Fawn. and That's Fawn's character. leave the thing I want to spend the rest of my life doing? Jesus Christ. Sorry. Why are you surprised? Well, I don't, know. I don't know. It's just horrifying to hear about, I guess. Uh, but this was constant and you couldn't tell anybody. Like... Even if the producers or assistant directors were women and had been through the same thing, they couldn't do anything because the director would just push them out too because the male directors held all the power, you know? And the thing is, in Catholic Ireland, on stage, being grabbed by fucking directors and co-stars and what have you, of course you'd be made out to be the harlot. Because not only did you have a toxic theatre culture, but you also had toxic Catholic culture as well. It was it's... compounded into this little fucking pass the parcel of shit. Chat so bad right now. It's always your fault. So it's always it's always your fault yeah. when, when somebody starts starts touching on you. It's always like I understand that religious aspect of culture where it's like it's always the female's fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I've got uh, the perspective of, like, from a, a sex worker point of view. There were times when I did things I wasn't comfortable with because I needed the money. Or because I was afraid of the things my clients would do if I said no. Because in England, while it is legal to sell your body, it is not legal to buy it number one, and number two, it is also not legal to work alongside another escort to hire any form of security or a driver or anything else. You have to work in a house by yourself entirely. And even then, that's if you're lucky because no one is legally allowed to profit off of the work of a sex worker. So if your landlord finds out that you're a sex worker to save their own hide, they are very likely to kick you out. Because otherwise they could go to prison. It's fucked. And then the third sort of perspective I have is from like a panel host point of view. So with this conversation, I wanted to have sort of people from every end of the spectrum. So we've got some non-binary folks in here, both AMAB and AFAB. We've got uh, straight folks. We've got cis folks. We've got trans folks. We've got... um, you know, different races and ethnicities and nationalities uh, and then different areas again, like in different like backgrounds and stuff. And I try really hard to make sure that particularly in conversations where it's pertinent like this one, to have people spanning from lots of different backgrounds so that all kind of, all leftist perspectives are covered, yes, but also anybody can be a Twitch streamer. Yes, it's easier for white people. It's easier if you're English or American. It's considerably easier if you're an American white person, an American white man specifically. But anyone can do it, you know? And I figure if I include as many people of as many different backgrounds as possible, then if someone stumbles onto Twitch one day and stumbles into my panel, then there you go. They know that if they decide they want to do it, they can do it. Kez, though, I, 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 have, uh, I have one critique for you, which is where the fuck is the billionaire representation on here? I asked him. <laughs> <There's no label. laughs> <laughs> I asked that fucker for my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But it's, uh, j- just to get the obligatory kind of like, it, it, it's not an accident that you're being asked to trade labor for your dignity. Um, it's no accident that we exist within a capitalistic system that asks you to view yourself as a commodity and to pride your ability 100% to commodify yourself. Zonzi. It's no accident that you have to abandon all of the morals you have to make ends meet. Hey, um, it, it's good like to the see other you. side of this conversation is that there's no ethical consumption under really capitalism. Happy to see you, there's no ethical engagement Much in love. capitalism because you have to commodify the human spirit to do it at all because. Throughout all the different conversations we've just heard over the past 20 minutes, 
if you have no individual influence or power as an individual within capitalism, the system will chew you the fuck up and it'll spit you out because if it can't make money from you, it doesn't want you to exist. Which is why kind of like that. Um, one of the um, the the pushback I got from Johnny Scarlett reminded me of something earlier when I was talking about influence that I just didn't mention that I should have. Which is individuals that don't have power. A way you can get power is to unionize. A way you can get power is to collectivize your influence with other people with very little influence. Because like a roaring torrent of water is so much more impactful than just a single raindrop. Um, get people together and you have influence. Um, one of the most powerful unions in the world is American airline unions, and they're almost unexploitable because of it. Um, now, American capitalism found a way around it, which is people in kind of like lower aviation airline uh, air industry get horrendously ex uh, exploited, which is why we now have an airline uh, pilot crisis, because the only pilots who exist are the people who are at the very top. Um, but it, it gets to the point where that if you unionize, you can have a say in some degree. Now, I, I don't want this to come across as a just unionised dummy because that's essentially the exact same bootstrap argument of just go get another job. Peace they will make it hard really for you to do it. Argument. And the reason they will is because they really don't want simplistic. you to have influence. Yeah, Zanzi, just quickly, uh, sorry. Um, I want to pass it over to Galilad who has to actually head out. Yeah, uh, sure. So if there's anything you want to plug, Galilad, or... Any further education topics, perhaps on the Magdalene laundries of the mother and baby homes or whatever you want to plug, you know, go on. I have nothing to say. Listen, best of luck, everyone. Look. Cheers, my friend. I'll see you later. Thanks for coming. Um, Thanks for being here, Galad. So, <clears throat> with that in mind, you say unionize, right? The problem with that is for gig work unionizing yeah. is incredibly difficult yeah like every time which, which being sample this <laughs> i'm getting to that if people don't interrupt me for a minute for fuck's sake i have noticed and it's been spoken about a few times there have been people banned for discussing unions on twitch like discussing planning one and getting involved in one ditto on youtube um there's been like, there is active squash at any attempt to unionize. And sex workers trying to unionize, fuck He's right off. Being so dense. There's no way in hell that's going to happen. In most places, being a sex worker is completely and utterly illegal. And the places it's not, they don't want you to unionize because it off offers you more protections anyway. So they'll crush it just like they crushed everything else. It, it's Thatcher style fucking union busting, is what it is. True. And it's gross. Like, you can say, we need to unionize until the cows come home. That does not make it something that's going to be practical to happen. Unfortunately. I mean, and that's the that's the position that, um, you know, industries are finding themselves in more, is more and more industries become micro gig economy, um, like micro contract work. And, uh, you know, that's, that's why... Uh, <laughs> I kind of jumped from one gig industry that was really bad to, as it turns out, another gig industry. Um, but in writing, it just became to the point where the 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 pay kept getting squashed down further and further and further, and the jobs that were even available um, became more and more exploitative um, because there's no negotiating power whatsoever. You are just in a open competing market for random off the cuff contracts that can be renewed or dropped at the drop of a hat if you so much as ask for more. Um, and the idea that you can negotiate for more when you're on a contract basis in a market that's flooded with labor, um, mm. is just, it's just doesn't happen. So yeah, it is a tough situation. I don't know what the exact, um, answer is, um, for that sort of thing. Um, because it is hard because people need a, a, a paycheck and so they're forced into participating in these, um, these horrific economies. I like, again, gig, the gig economy to me is, is such an unbelievable um such an unbelievable regression of progress that we've made on labor and it only does that it, it just gets by on a on a couple of slight technicalities and loopholes in contract law um maybe maybe there's a way to close those and that would uh you know restore some balance but for now jesus yeah i mean one of the things i've really noticed yes they do um... yes they do Try to figure out how I'm going to parse this because I did have it in my head a minute ago and it kind of semi fucked off. 
Um, there's the Obviously. want to unionize, sure. But Twitch makes such a loss for Amazon that even if every single streamer and every single chatter decided to strike and boycott all at once, Amazon wouldn't blink because it is a tiny, tiny drop in the water of their income. Tiny. They wouldn't give a fuck. So, like, we can sit here and say unionize until the cows come home, but even if we do, then what? It still wouldn't secure us anything because we don't have any leverage. I, I uh, do want to point out that I closed off everything I said with. It's not easy, and to just say unionize is essentially saying just go get another job. I made very clear yeah. to point out the fact that they don't want you to have influence. So like they don't. Yeah, they really all, don't. all of this is just reiterating my point. I feel. Oh yeah, I know, but I'm kind of for those who don't know, I'm expla explaining why it's not that easy. Yeah. If that makes sense, because there are a lot of people who don't know why. Yeah, the the gig economy is just so hard to unionize because they can just. They, they can uh, atomize and individualize a lot of the different industries by just kind of like separating a lot. Of, like the affiliate and the partner program is a really good way of diversifying, uh, not good diversifying, of just kind of like splitting up your workforce because the partners don't want to risk their partnership on what the affiliates want. Yeah. I got to go. I got work tonight. So I'm going to give me a little last piece here and then I'm going to skedaddle. Uh, go for sure. one, of, one of the ways that we could uh, address, help address this, something that, I think that I've heard come up time and time again with almost everybody's uh, perspective here is that they have a hard time actually influencing the systems they work in, whether it's art or just the average working class gig worker, uh, because we are tied to our jobs. You have to, I, um, right now, uh, if I, my family stopped working, we would not have rent next month, right? I just don't have, I need yep. money, right? We, I get paid, you know, we have to do it, right? So if we had some sort of like welfare system, like other countries do, that like we could afford this country in which you could take trap, some time off and work. It. If you got fired, you were not going to starve. Maybe if your a job was, if your housing was not directly tied to you going to work every single day at minimum four to five days a week, right? Uh, or more, many people you know, work multiple jobs. Um, this is something that I think, and I think would also work to address uh, the worries that uh, you were pointing out, Kez, which is that, uh, you know, in some industries like Amazon, uh, it doesn't really fucking matter if you do unionize because so much of fucking we'll Amazon and so much afterwards. of uh, Microsoft and these kind of companies Thanks, Microsoft. comes from their uh, cloud-based services and their internet services, stuff that really it's hard to unionize at all because that's really super integrated and complicated. Uh, so yeah, that's why we need to, uh, of course, just vote Joe Biden. He'll fix everything. Uh, and we want to talk about this anymore, right? So uh, just give us like four years. We'll fix, we'll fix capitalism. So, I think so, we're talking so, about it. Bye -bye. Say yeah. vote Joe Biden. He'll fix everything again, please. Vote Joe Biden and he'll fix everything. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, um, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. chat. Everyone go Bye. follow Kobe. <clears throat> Kobe, uh, thank you for coming. Can I quickly add a little me. bit of context into what Kobe said? Sure, go for it. Uh, yeah, it, cards on the table. I'm studying political theory and political philosophy. Um, I, I have to just responsibly point out where that what Kobe is saying is really, really good, but it is it carries with it a gigantic fucking risk because yeah, I can turn uh, we throw around the word reformism an awful lot as a pejorative, but the introduction of the introduction of a UBI is a gamble because it will completely transform people's lives go. for the better. But what it is doing is reforming a system to in further entrench that system. And it makes more. it so much harder Sorry, to sometimes, actually again, resist Discord audio because levels are part of what makes revolution possible so is the alienation induced from living within that system. If you make that you system more tolerable, live? we Here's might some never... Here's more money. Hence, yeah, well, hence by saying it's a giant gamble. Um, it could work. It may not work. It's um, like... It's from well, there is a new perspective. It's so diff difficult. Whoa, 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 whoa! Kobe, you said you were leaving, so fuck off. <laughs> I'm well, we're just part of my thing, though. We're just part of my thing. I'll just say, like, a welfare system is not UBI, though. Right? UBI has its own problems. A welfare system can be something that that you know is not a, not a welfare system or a, sorry, not a, a UBI. Um, but yeah, no, I, I actually don't really know what I think about this idea of like um, entrenching. It. I mean, like, we have problems. We need to solve them. I want to make them better. Um, I don't. I mean, there's also the gamble of not of not going about fixing them through sort of incrementalism, them not being fixed, and it what's happening right now, which is that may not work. Yeah, but that's like everything, right? And like, right, what, what could happen right now, which is that like the I left in America has no power. Everything's a gamble. Yeah, mm. uh, it's it, just Actually, to clarify, it's welfare capitalism. There's um, something the, I wanted to add in here. Um, yep. uh, that's relevant. You can say if we had a welfare state as much as you like. The UK has one. Myself and my other half were both on disability. We have two kids. We can barely make it by if I'm not streaming. Barely. 
the UK, the like reason... the rest of the Western world, it, like you know, had their welfare states gutted in the 1980s, 1990s, right? Sort of. It only really got severely gutted in the 2000s and 2010s. That's when yeah. it got really bad. Uh, after David Cameron came in uh, was when it kind of got ramped up. But even Tony Blair was and Gordon Brown were cutting it before that. But um, with where it is now, right now, the NHS is so badly underfunded that mental health care, there's a, like a two-year waiting list. There's a four or five-year waiting list for uh, gender clinics. There's uh, for non-urgent surgeries. No, boy, there's an eighteen-month waiting list. I am have That's been on a waiting list for just over a year now to get my tubes tied so I don't get pregnant again, which could kill me. Good mauled. Like genuinely, it could kill me or paralyze me, and I've been on a waiting list for a year, and it looks like I haven't moved because of the pandemic. Sure, but that that's that's just like a funding problem, right? Like like what well, what other, what, what other system could I haven't finished. Between that and the fact that with even with both of us on disability and in so much pain day to day and me struggling with a lot of mental health disorders, that means we cannot work. We are assigned to the bottom of the pile, like even here. If I did not stream we would not be able to afford all the groceries we need. We'd probably end up having to put the baby on cow's milk instead of formula, which he should be on, which means he wouldn't be getting all the nutrients he needed. Just as an example, right? We'd end up having to financially cut a lot of corners, which would lead to developmental issues for the kids and growth stunting and then extra pain for us and, you know, extra issues then for us in the long run. And it just... You can say welfare state till the cows come home, but the problem is, unless it is set up in such a way that it cannot be tampered with once it's in place and funded properly, which isn't something that's possible to do, because in the States, as far as I'm aware, you cannot pass a piece of legislation that is not allowed to be tampered with after the fact, like if, well, you, if you the president changes. Anything, but it see, that's kind of the, that's part of the problem, though. If there is something but, like a universal healthcare bill or a welfare bill put in place, or a UBI bill even put in place that says, you know, everybody gets this much if they can't work or full stop, right? Like, everybody gets this much, which is enough to live off of. So like a percentage of, say, the, the average wage um, to live okay in that area, right? Uh, everybody gets yeah, that or everybody gets the average wage for that area that is okay to uh, live off of which is you know probably the best way to do it because you can't have it the same all the way across the states because it just wouldn't work um, then the only no, way you could secure you that and that stop way, everything reverting back to how it is now is if there was a way to put in the legislation that it could not be changed at all full stop yeah, but like you can't do that with anything. Like like anything could change, right? Like that that's not a reason to not implement like a, a system like universal healthcare or something like this, right? No, I'm not saying it's a reason to not implement it. What I'm saying is you can implement it. That doesn't mean it's going to fix anything. Well, yeah, it would. If we had like if we're in America, if we had universal healthcare systems, all those problems would still exist, but they would not be as bad. How many people in the UK do you think are homeless? Just off the top I have of absolutely head. no idea. Yeah. A considerable portion of the population. Uh, proportionally, three hundred fifty thousand people. There you go. So yeah. we have three hundred and fifty thousand people homeless. There are a considerable amount of those getting the very very basic form of welfare. Not all of them, because they're fucking assholes with the bureaucracy. But considerable portions of those are getting the bare minimum. They are homeless because of so many other things than just welfare and healthcare like that's kind of my point like the over the systems as a whole and the way they intersect are all built up against the poor you can't just implement that's how you have to do it though right homeless people like these two specific to things and get to work. yeah but like all these problems would exist even if like literally tomorrow the workers money. own the means of production like in 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 the uk right like we have no, to build no, houses we fundamentally <laughs> separated now the point of my critique was you're entrenching the system if workers own the means of production you've smashed the system 
These are I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. Even if the worker owned the means of production, all these problems would still exist. You're still going to have homeless people. Relationships homeless people. the means of production is what separates socialism from capitalism. And it's yeah, but I mean, this is. <laughs> there's literally no prescription of how we'd ever do this, right? And I have a prescription. I, I see a problem. It's I have a prescription. Completely different argument. How so we do this? Did you just say that argument. under under a socialist system that homelessness would still exist? They still have these problems in in Cuba. They have these problems in in any socialist system you can look at. Yeah. There it's better, but again, these problems still exist. These these things can happen. People, every there's always going to be people that fall through the cracks. How are you going to solve every single problem for every single person? It's impossible. Like, it's a nirvana. Yeah, life. it's impossible. I, feel, I, impossible. I, feel, I just feel like What's this is so to far be the removed from my point. If that's the reality. The reality is that we're o that part now. of politics, part of the social interaction between human beings and creating a better society, Maybe is that it is a constant synthesis. something that we have to always work towards. We're always going to find we're going to make we can find a new system. Should be think, you know we're going to have to address that system. We're going to have to patch it. Sometimes we're going to have to rip it out and re, 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 uh, redo it. But, but mm -hmm. the problem is, is that a lot of the critiques I see about reformism that I'm seeing here, they're not act the the problem is that the, the critique is okay. Well, this reform is not going to solve this problem. But the problem is, no. there really is how not any, move, any of these problems to solve the critique, problem. Because none of this is anything to do with my critique. If we've moved so, on, okay. by all means, I'll <laughs> If we enroot, the problem with, them, with, right with entrenching the system is, the problem with this with this, with this this criticism of, of a reformist, of, a, of some sort of reform, is we don't actually have any reason to believe that a, there's another system that could work better. For example, something like, like housing. If you're if you're if your problem with housing is like oh well I'm I'm reluctant to do reformism on housing because this is going to re re entrench the private property system. Okay, well how are we going to get rid of private property in the UK or in America, right? Okay, see you're going in a different direction from the conclusion I'm trying to reach. The I'm issue I have with entrenchment is because it significantly reduces the likelihood of revolution. We saw this through the emergence of the welfare democracies across Western Europe with the emergence of the Soviet Union next door. The reason you saw welfare capitalism emerge was to make it less likely for the syndicalist and, and worker parties to actually gain power through reducing the alienation of those societies. Um, when you so entrench too. capitalism, Reconcile. you make capitalism I'm harder to overthrow. That. Sure. that is the point of my critique. Nothing to do with other systems have problems. That's such an obvious fucking take. I don't get how that has anything well, to do with it. Well, this just seems like, uh, you're, I mean, it seems like you're going like accelerationism, right? We need to like let the system fall Wait, apart. No, no, no. So hold hold on a second. Maybe I can, maybe I can cut in here and offer some synthesis. I, I, I'm genuinely confused because it feels like this conversation is like, like just, whew, just going past one another. Um, my understanding is that UBI has some big issues. For example, I don't even want that. Wait, wait, you brought that up. I just want wait, welfare. Wait, 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 wait. You gotta let me, gotta let me talk. You gotta let me have my turn. Listen, um, cause here's the thing, like here in the U S for example, we had a, a very popular candidate, uh, Andrew Yang put forward a, a UBI. And the problem with his UBI was that it actually would undercut two other welfare systems that we have. And so even though it seemed like an expansion of our, of our welfare system that would have probably provided a lot of relief um, in certain ways. There are other members of the populace who would not benefit at all, most of those being people who most needed it. So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with what um, like Zanzi is saying about having critiques about the specific implementation of how we make things more equitable. Um, and I don't know, like, like that's like, I, I don't really see that as a form of accelerationism rather as saying like, Hey, wait Maybe a minute. Maybe a misunderstanding. Yeah. That's argument. what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying because to Because it seems like what, it seems like, it seems like Enough. Saying. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. Kirby, you said you had to go. I don't want you to be late for work. <laughs> I, see, I got working in many hours, but that's so, fine. Sorry I, I if I kept you, my friend. Um, we can talk about no, this fine. privately another time if you want. But yeah, no, I mean, it's like this all is going to make the most poor of our society hurt the worst. And maybe one day when like everything falls apart, we'll fix it. But like, I don't know, I kind of want to make things better now. But, you know, we, we make overall, diversity of tactics and stuff. The overall point I was trying to make is there are so many things that need addressing that just addressing the symptoms doesn't really do anything effective. I'll be right it back. It just kind of I'm gonna hit patches the them right with a Band-Aid. But when... Give me just a second here. Uh oh, did we lose audio here? Uh, well, just straight up reform is because the internal contradictions within capitalism weird. render every uh, reform limited in time that eventually the capitalist system will collapse upon itself, rendering your reforms impossible to introduce. Because, All right, well then, it seems like we're working yeah. on the same side then. I can make yeah. I can make life a little bit better for people, like on my side, or like my idea, make my life a little bit better for marginalized people now, and then when this shit falls apart, you can be there, you can have your red flag, we'll build up socialism. So you agree with me, it's a gamble. <laughs> uh, no, I think that your idea is kind of just like a meme. 
right? Like maybe yeah. one day shit will fall apart, but like I want to, uh, I want to try to make the world better before I die. Okay, well, th well this conversation's over then. <laughs> sure. Can I insert right, naive uh, optimism into the UBI thing? I don't want a fucking UBI. I'm relieved. I'm re I hate UBI. Fuck UBI. Welfare all the way, boy. <laughs> Stock them game. Yeah. I, I'm not against any special. of these things. <laughs> I'm just trying to point out, out if you entrench a system, it's difficult, more difficult to get rid of. I'm still just not over the take that uh, that socialism would would maintain homelessness. I'm just not quite... I mean, isn't the whole point that we just... Like, it would national... take a long time right. to end it, but I think it could be ended. Anyway. Okay, yeah, I feel like... Mean, like, there, are people then, who like haven't had a, there are people in America who haven't had a social security card who have been living in things like uh, like national park trailer homes uh, since the 1970s. They haven't had a social security card since the 1970s. You want to sign them up for a system that'll get them a house and and Medicare and everything like that, and they can't even identify themselves as an American citizen? How's that going to work? I they're American citizens. I want everyone to have a house. There's more, there's yeah. more, there's more empty the houses American than American government paying people. for it cares whether or not it's an American system. It's a citizen, okay. excuse me. Okay, but the American government... Well, yeah, government but I agree. We need to get rid of the American is, government. Oh, the um... whole point. <laughs> Uh, I agree. The American government will fall. Hold on, wait. And hold on, wait. We can. By Texas, it'll be fine. It depends. Hold on, wait. No, wait. With, with those people, what you can do is just like what we've done in the past. Actually, is uh, we can we can do things like uh, like mass naturalization of of people who don't have social security mm -hmm. cards in the first yeah. place. Like we we did yeah. that um for a lot of the Mexican families that we have that are some generations in from uh, World War Two. They didn't have whatever they came with with visas. It works. People who stayed, like uh, was it? I think Roosevelt naturalized those uh, a decent amount of those people. We did it back like in the 1700s. Said. Yeah, like they they just just bring them all in, bring them, give them you know, give them the fucking give them all their fucking social security cards, and bring them on of into a the tax base. That might incentivize that. Um, I didn't realize we had done it in some capacity already, but I th had thought of a system that incentivized that by, um, for instance, a lot of people who live in the U.S. illegally are using uh, one security card for multiple people. And so they're paying way more taxes than the average people um, of, of their income brackets, of their real income brackets. So uh, one way to incentivize mass naturalization and people actually coming forward with their information would be to hello, promise hello. that we would uh, um, give them tax refunds for all of the back taxes they owe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Or for all of the back taxes that they have paid, Oops. you know, that was excessive. I mean, you could, but honestly, sadly, honestly, it, you could probably just just get take a lot of people in with like the stick. So it's like, hey, you could be a citizen now. Oh, you and could you probably get a lot of people you'll, like that. It'll be yeah. illegal, and we'll probably like you know throw you out. So you know, take it or leave it. Most people like just like in the past, they're like, oh fuck that, we're, like we gone. Let's get it. Abolish the idea of a of a citizen in the first place, and just say if you're here, you get all the rights that you get all the human rights. I don't understand why it has to be a whole thing personally. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, oh, it, sorry, just very quickly, the naive optimism about uh, UBI, specifically in a place like uh, the USA, I, while it would perpetuate horrific neoliberal conditions in, the, in a short, long term, whatever that means, mo most likely, I do think the kind of access to uh, just a general thing, life beyond work, and specifically how that leads one to both information and often uh, and a greater degree of access to uh, culture and community. I think that would both, in the way it would perpetuate American neoliberalism, it would probably continue to highlight some of uh, capitalism's glaring contradictions much more extremely, and mm. because people would not have their life as consumed by work right, in let's so bring down many the temperature contexts, a little bit in chat. not necessarily the working class and most vulnerable, unfortunately, but in such a huge degree of the population, it itself could be responsible for a radical uh, shift in thinking on, or at least in the level of class consciousness, which is slightly below the level of a dead ferret in the United States generally, but has True. increased it's, it's under almost, Trump. Okay. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, please. How it, how it, they create so much art, but it's hang on, please. perpetuation of capitalism. Thank you. Um, Zan has to go in a minute, uh, but before he does, I do want to say... I am sorry for having to turn my gain up so loud to be fucking heard, but with children in bed, I cannot shout. 
That's so let's fine. just twist the knob and speak enough, my normal fair volume. Enough. Fair enough. And let you get deafened, unfortunately. I just need to turn Kaz down more. So but it works. So it's peeking out my eyes. The actual yeah. knobs on your, uh, on your mic, I don't ever use them. Yeah. yeah. The, actual, the actual knobs on, on the A in front of me. Actually, you can set by whatever by standard you wish. And I like it very much. It's much better than my old one. Nor should we. I just skip straight over the uh, snowball, which most people have first, and then went straight to the AT. It's good. I looked at the reviews, and the A was better, and seemed to last longer for how much it was, and there was only like a 20 quid price difference, so... Yeah, I'll find it. Okay. Um, so, Zanzi, do you have anything you want to close out with before you head off? Yeah, first of all, Sorel, hey, I actually didn't see you there. Um, how the fuck are you doing, my friend? Um, I'll chat to you again, because I have to go, and um, it, it's it's silly, it's insignificant, but... You wearing a mask actually is really good because it's just giving that sense of like that's normal and we should be wearing masks. She's um, only doing I, it because she hasn't got her lippy on. There you go. I had no way of knowing. You just absolutely fucking doxed her right there. I hope you're happy, Kez. I, just... I am. Barry, I know the way women's minds work. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, you have me for about 10 minutes more. Uh, I, I, I do you want me to go now? I can give an outro, or um, that depending on where the conversation is, you have me for about ten minutes. Mostly, I want to know if you have anything coming up that you want to plug, particularly, uh, or anything pertinent you want to say, uh, and <laughs> so on. From I there. feel you on that, Shemeki. Let, let me just check my calendar. But I'm on stream um, all the time. So I, I basically just anyway. I stream on Twitch. Um, I've got um, two YouTube videos I'm working on. One I'm doing. Um, uh, I also wear it because I don't want to get analysis of Final Fantasy else VII, An analysis of ideology from a Marxist perspective using Final Fantasy VII as the vehicle to drive that. And based mm -hmm. off of uh, an awesome tutorial I had in sociology, I want to use uh, Marxist class analysis to deconstruct the Matrix because the Matrix actually is a really good way of understanding the Communist Manifesto. Uh, so those are two videos that I'm working on at the moment. I like the idea of using pop culture to deconstruct society because, well, we need to deconstruct society. Um, that's what I've got coming up at the moment. Tomorrow, Do you want to drop your, your YouTube link in the chat? Sounds like um, I have, I have a link tree. If you just follow that link, it'll take you to everything that is me. Um, tomorrow Wait, on Twitch, what? I am streaming. I've got a, a podcast Hewitt. called Left Thinking, where I just that? bring people of a leftist persuasion from all across the globe on to chat to me. And I've got Sheep in the Box on tomorrow for that one, so that should be fun. What the fuck is this? Uh, hey. just like to confirm Sheep, because I'm pretty sure Jake I have Hewitt you for tomorrow. Shit in here? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's that's like, yeah, them right out. Out. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't mixed you up with somebody. No, that's fine. I wasn't. Yeah, that's fine. You didn't think that throws around, did you? You can't drink your cup of tea. <laughs> I'll be right back, hang on. Uh, so yeah, if anybody in chat doesn't, I don't go know follow who the fuck Zanzi, you're talking about because actually man. he's a big brain, pain in the arse, yes, but he's also very educational. This big is, brain! I... That's the that's the imperative. <laughs> it's a nickname I got. I, I'm, I'm just an old school Marxist studying political theory and philosophy in college. Um, I, I, I like systemic critiques. I like figuring out what systems can and should do. Uh, even like the issue like you mentioned earlier in terms of like that, what can artists do? Um, what I can do is provide that what I want to see from society, but then I can't obviously tell you how to do that because I don't have the lived experience of living in those industries. Um, the solution I give you would be totally paradoxical to your actual oh, experiences. Actually... Um, something, something else that can be done. I'm sorry that that you just made me think of is is not just uh, the express making of art or the express oh, okay. like uh, accepting of jobs that are that are absolutely like progressive in your in in an ideal, but also platforming. This is something that even people with no influence can do. Uh, uh, and that's a horrible way of saying it, by the way, like people who just don't get on social media that much, like whatever platform, whenever you share something platform people who are independent platform people who maybe don't look like you platform people who are making art. Yeah. Yeah. And and for I, I... like, like they say for every viral tweet, like it doesn't go viral because of like, whoever tweeted it, yeah, it goes viral because great. of like, I like accounts I like a lot. that that platform it like these small accounts that platform it yeah I, I, yeah signal boosting is proxies 
Yeah. Yes. Like, like True. here's a fundamental True. philosophy that I have like that. If you stream to four people and one of them joins your local socialist party, joins your IWW, uh, like knocks door to door and says like, hey, I've got some extra food, a casserole. Would you like some? If one person's life is changed from the, no matter how many viewers you had, you had a successful stream. Um, do what you can proportional to your influence. Always be trying to grow your influence to grow your influence. So I always, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Just, yeah, even as a case of, uh, so I'm going to chime in with a thing of, it doesn't always have to be a global stage. It could even just be something local to, like, in a local level. Uh, like, so on the world stage, your, like, you know, any individual's influence might be really small. But when you reduce that from, like, worldwide to country, which, like, you know, um, or state in the U.S., because, you know, uh, like, you know the average U.S. state is still probably bigger than the average uh, U.S., or, sorry, non-U.S. country. Uh, everything not in the U.S. is in Europe, of course. But even if you take it down to like the the town level, your relative influence compared to everyone else there is getting a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, like you know, even it's a case of like you know, you have like you know, you might not be an artist, but you have friends with artists or who are artists. Even just signal boosting them throughout your own local community yes. is like the your like, police a really underreached. Locally, Congress and Senate have nothing to do with that. Never forget, yeah. nerd. I think, and it's a very, in my opinion, like underrated as as aspect. Um, That's as far as I know. Kind of like of the idea of like signal boosting. It's the one thing anarchists. Well, I mean, I don't think that's an absurd your local claim. Community has to factor into your activism. I don't know yeah. what's it. Perfectly, I think it's a bang on the money for everything. Uh... Um, I no, I don't think anarchists have a good relationship with money, so I wouldn't use that turn of phrase. An excellent point. Uh... Um, I, I I just think global capitalism has deeply complicated um, anarchism. Um, I I don't think it's a defunct ideology. It's just made it significantly more difficult to implement. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. If you're talking to us, Master, you're muted. Can never bloody tell. No, I was talking on stream too. I'd be. Um, I could jump in if you want. You I'm spoken, very quickly right? just going to sign out and say everybody thanks a million for having me on. Bye, I have to go now because it's 2020. Bye, Zandy. Nice to you. You're always. Bye. Bye. You're always welcome. See you later. Bye -bye. I'm probably going to go at midnight. Shut up, Jake. I've had people over you for fuck's sake. What was that shape? I was just going to say I'm probably going to go at midnight. Uh, uh, just to make it work. Actually, I was going to start um, wrapping up soon anyway. Uh, okay, All right, so we're, remember to stick around after the panel because we're going to do uh, some politics streaming. Um, and some, so, uh, maybe some if there's anything you want to we'll add. Because um, we haven't heard much from you. And then Mava say, sheep in the box. Uh, and then we'll do closeouts if that's cool. Sorry, I know you weren't here for long, Zara. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm only here just to plug Zanzi, to be honest. And to look pretty. Zanzi is good true yeah um so in terms of um I, I guess i'm just kind of like adding and chiming into kind of like what we've already talked about but um i don't really consider myself like an artist or anything per se but in terms of like getting into like news and politics for example like that's not something i would have ever considered in the past just because of like what we talked about like with the corporate structure um same thing with the music industry and trying to break into those um i my ex-girlfriend family used to joke like oh you should be like a model and it's like I was like, oh, they're serious. And I was like, well, I guess I could, but it probably wouldn't be like in a structure that I would believe in. Like it, yeah. yeah. So I, I think doing uh, something independent, like that's kind of what Twitch was for me before I would have started what would, what I call standing on guard, which would have been, you know, like secular talk or whatever show like on YouTube before I, I basically got into it through Twitch. Um, and the reason I'm able to do stuff on Twitch is buddy, specifically so. because I'm on disability, because I have that support. And like even here in Canada, um, where I'm from, by the way, um, disability oh, we'll is like half of what uh, we'll people see. got for uh, co the COVID benefit. Uh, the CRB in Canada was like two thousand um, dollars. People on disability get less than twelve hundred. So yeah, basically the opposite of equity there. Still, and like I don't have dependents or anything like that. Um, I'm a cyclist, as you can see in the background. Um, there's a lot of things I do in order to make that stretch and to make it work. And then of course I also have you know uh, patrons and support for my channel. So that's kind of the approach I took with it um, to that degree. Um, as you probably noticed in the background too, I'm also you know learning guitar. So I have kind of ambitions uh, musically somewhat. 
Yeah, it is um, hard and to get I think on doing kind of musical practice, I've never even um, been on a Vosh you know, in terms dream. of like current issues and trying to uh, draw to. awareness to like current and political issues um, is another way we can um, make a, you know, make a difference, do some praxis in terms of, yeah. um, you know, being an artist. I think um, there, again, it's really stressing the indep independence part, because again, like um, we're in the digital age, <laughs> we're in a, um, an era where we um, it's unprecedented in terms of like what people can do, you know, for themselves. Like I set up a mic and a cam and here I am on Twitch, right? You can do that with music. You can do that um, through Spotify as well. Although I, there's probably issues with Spotify, but I digress. Um, I just think not being, doing it in a way that's um, authentic to yourself and allows you to, um, you know, speak your mind, your politics, do what you actually want to do is very imperative. And that was the only way I would have considered, you know, doing something like this. Um, previously, I would have never even um, envisioned myself doing something like this because I just didn't think it would be possible. You know, like, again, the economic oppression through capitalism is set up very much in a way, um, you know, to make it um, hard for you. And even in terms of, like, the disability I do get, for example, um, it's, you know, it's mutually exclusive from other forms of, uh, like, for example, the CRB, other forms of income. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I guess that's about pretty much what I want to say uh, with regards to that. Uh, Marvase has... Oh, there he is. Welcome back. Hi. What do you do? You have anything you want to add before we uh, start on outros about the most recent stuff that's been discussed? Uh, good God, I know. I I I kind of I I'm not gonna lie. I kind of wanted to comment on the entrenchment versus like short term improvement thing, but then I don't know. I felt like like that was just gonna turn into a big old like shit show thing. Mm. And it doesn't seem right to do it now because he's gone. <laughs> I went for mum. I, I put my, my mother pants on and did, did a bollocking is what I did. Well, um, you know, you got to put the mama jeans on. It happens. Yeah, I live in mom jeans. <laughs> well, I'm basically Zanzi. You could, you could ask me. I am basically Zanzi right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm where. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, to I mean, your question, I, I, that's an interesting question. So you should, um, uh, you should ask me that in the form of a comment on my latest YouTube video. Uh, here's my link tree, uh, link tree slash Zanzi. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, just wanted to give a plug, but um, like I know for a fact you, Zanzi will be very interested in like continuing that conversation. I know for a fact, probably might be worth Agreed, oh, Tom Bombadil. I'm having things attack me. Mordevag, I do not think you know the people on this panel enough to take the piss like that. Okay? Just, no. Number one. Number two, um, yeah, Zanzi is in chat, so if you want to critique, go for it, Mavise. Oh, no, I, 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 <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm of two minds, right? So, like, I guess I would be at this point. Sorry, I didn't have as much to say. We went off on a bunch of different be, topics. It was interesting nonetheless, we though, I think. We have a lot to talk about afterwards, state too. state so. here in America at this moment. But I'm also... Play some video games and chat with people from chat. I, that would be fun. I do want... We'll see. We'll see. To Dylan also wanted me to go on and make fun of Trump. Capitalism at some point, or at least be going in that direction. Hopefully, at least by the time maybe that we'll I'm dead, and I kind of lay that groundwork. That would be fun. And then maybe my kids or their kids or whatever will attempt to push past this. Which if they don't die from True. like you know the world world all turning into one big old desert ball. <laughs> but you know they call them Generation Alpha for a reason, okay? The strongest of all of us. But anyway, yeah, that, that, that sort of thing. So I'm like, mm. but yeah, I want to hear that later though. I love it. Oh, no, wait. You're gonna play a fucking piano, dude. You got. We're on Twitch. You're gonna play fucking uh, to Zanarkin. What are you doing? Bless you. Oh, good right song. now. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> play what? right what? now. Ooh. What? But I gotta play what? <laughs> to Zanarkin. What? Final Fantasy X. Bless yeah. You. <laughs> I've played one uh, Final Fantasy game in my life, and I used tactic. to be able to play that. I can sing it. There you go. Keep going. No, you... Yeah, you got you got a couple of the notes in there. The um, chad move would be to uh, to just play a theremin. Uh -huh. 
It's like um, it's like singing without vocal cords. Theremins are so creepy. I love them. Ooh, oh, for sure, yeah. Fair. I'm a little bit surprised he doesn't already play the theremin. In his <laughs> he plays I, the theremin already. I do know how to play the theremin, but I don't own one. They're expensive. <laughs> well, they're not as expensive as they used to be, but I don't. I can't justify lugging it around the way I can my other instruments. That's fair. Mind you, this is the guy who also plays a hurdy gurdy, unironically. A hurdy gurdy. Wait, really? That's oh, based. Yeah. I that haven't is fixed. Cool. The, I haven't fixed the second drone string yet, so I, I should uh, start playing. This. I love the hurdy gurdy. Fixed... Wait, sorry. D drone what? Drone string. So my hurdy gurdy string. has three strings. Okay. Normally they have more, but I only have three strings, two drones. Oh, that's and oh, that's an L. Oh, that's an instrument. I thought I thought for some reason we were talking about the long forgotten PlayStation 2 game hurd hurdy gurdy. <laughs> we're talking about the, the instrument. No, the, the, um, the strange instrument that splits the difference between the sound of a violin and the sound of bagpipes. And also somehow an electric guitar. And I don't quite understand how it can do that. Um, yeah. There's a YouTuber I stumbled across. I can't remember her name. But she does covers of like metal songs and stuff on a hurdy gurdy and like layering herself playing on a hurdy gurdy over herself repeatedly. And it is the most amazing shit I have ever seen. That's why. I know who you're talking about. Uh, I, I want to say the channel name is like Patty Gurgi Gurdy or something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Who's that girl who did all the violin covers? She uh... Lindsay Sterling. Lindsay Sterling, yeah. I love a good Lindsay Sterling video. If you ever heard from she, uh, Brett Domino, she her whole body. Like I, I, I'm a classically trained ballet dancer, and I, string instruments are so like delicate That's looking so to cool. me. I cannot imagine doing all of the ridiculous dance moves and stuff, and moving her whole body the way she does while still like actively doing a string instrument to that degree of technicality. Look at you, all you fucking, all you cultured fucks. I'm down here with the fucking swine watching that one guy who plays violin while chicks twerk next to him. <laughs> to be fair, like, the only like the reason... Scum I am. The only reason that I Sounds got into cool. the hurdy-gurdy as an instrument is because of Brian David Gilbert. And the laptop song. Hurdy-gurdies are cool. I'll show you all some <laughs> hurdy-gurdies afterwards. the weirdest shit. gonna wrap up i don't think yeah. it is patty gurdy but it is a woman and i can't remember her fucking name More objectively the best gurdy. instrument is the uh the steel drum yes yes there's some uh, creepy vocaloid music that i listen to that uses steel drum i can show Kick you all on play this afterwards maybe you've screen. clearly never heard a bowron a what a bowron a bowron an Irish drum, and it is held in one hand, and you have a long stick with like bold on the end. Yeah, I'll be both. And yeah, it's like that, and yeah, you use your entire hand okay. to do like that sort of emotion with it, but in yeah. different paces and at different places on the drum, and it's this really old, earthy sort of sound. Gorgeous. Well, I thought that was the Welsh uh, viewers right, who so. could send me some. I want to learn how to play the pib gurn. I don't even know what that don't is. Know what that is? It's weird. It's a double reeded thing that looks like if a recorder flared up into a like clarinet ish thing at the end. Those are Isn't that real? one guy who makes instruments out of uh, vegetables. I've made <laughs> instruments out of vegetables before. I've made a carrot ocarina before. Oh, uh, sick! That's oh, cool. I've made a yeah, potato I'm ocarina gonna... like out of an actual potato before, but it fell apart after I played, like, one thing on it. Now yeah, that's the kind challenge. of what this, this one guy does. He, he does, he plays, like, an ocarina out of a potato, and he makes uh, some kind of drum out of out of a um, a pumpkin and all sorts of stuff. It's good. Now you have to make a didgeridoo old. out of a zucchini. If you can pull it off, I would be amazed. <laughs> now, nah, flute. You want to make a flute out of a... Uh, of, of, um... I have found it. The channel I was talking about was Michalina Malis, and I will put it in the Twitch chat. Egg. Excellent. Amazing. I'm making a new flute out of a thing from the, the paper towel roll. <laughs> Amazing. I the closest thing I ever got to making anything out of anything was I used to make corn cob pipes. This is corn cob pipes. Yeah. Hey, I, I, know, I used to smoke a corn PVC that were really good. Nice. Yeah, I used to know. Uh, I used to know this channel. There was an ASMR channel of a guy who um, 
would if you if you subscribed to his Patreon, he would make you a corncob pipe. It was all like ASMR pipe uh pipe enthusiast stuff and his like sign up for the for his Patreon. If you signed up to his Patreon, he would make you a little corncob pipe of your own so you could join in the fun um as a starter. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get back on topic. Right. I wanna do <laughs> outros because it's ten to fucking twelve. Let's do it. Tired. Let's do it. Uh so I'll start from the bottom. Zarel, outro. Go. Oh, um, okay, so, um... Remember, stick around after. Mainly the point I wanted to come in with the We're whole, gonna talk about um, a whole bunch of starting stuff. from the bottom, like, signal boosting stuff, like, a lot of the time it's easy to look at yourself, like, in relation to, like, the world stage. Uh, and think, like, you know, well, shit, yeah, I, like, I got no fucking influence. But if you, like, reduce it down to, like, like, you know, a country level, and then to, like, a state or county level, and then to, like, a just, like, city level, or even just, like, a village level... Uh, village town, have, like wherever you live, like just your, your local community, you have more influence than you might think. There, uh, obviously, under current societies, like you know, the uh, the kind of like the degree at which people might know their neighbors is kind of like decreased significantly. Um, and then if you live in like a city uh, or predominantly urban area, that goes way down like i like I, I live in a city that's divided by a river i don't really know anyone on my side of the river i know a bunch of people on the other side uh so that's about like but like you know even for me it's difficult but um like you know for a lot of people it's not the case of like you know they could just have the opportunity it's they kind of actually do if they take advantage of it uh, or if they're able to, obviously not everyone's able to, but even just starting at that, even if you don't continue Kill carrying lives. the torch in terms of like signal boosting and all that sort of stuff, um, I think Johnny's and influencing, even if you like reach people who have in your local area or Everybody's community that have the potential be real. to carry the torch, that's like, you know, that's significantly yeah, powerful. There's some interesting things about it. And that's kind of mainly what I wanted to add. Um, that's kind of the Soviet model, Sazi. isn't it? Soviets because, were uh, um, regional councils. Had some problems are, under yeah. Stalin, though. I know why. It's fine. Um. 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 Words, mastery, go. Uh, just like outro plugging. Outro and plugging. Um. Yeah. So I just wanted to you kind of read. Can't hear anybody over you because of the way uh, the Discord set up. Too loud. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, so um, just to touch on whatever <laughs> what everyone else is saying, like, yeah, local community um, is one of the most important things because, um, and like, this is coming from, like, you know, a very introverted, like, uh, social anarchist, by the way. Um, I recently started doing canvassing in my building, um, not, you know, least of all because of the kind of immediate uh, uh, reinstation of my uh, eviction hearing uh, that happened. Um, but, yeah, I, I just started that, and I've already started meeting uh, some community and like even had people give me like activist resources for example to the point where i'm like god damn it's like why didn't i do this sooner um so yeah um that's kind of like my way um, of kind of like starting a, a kind of like you know base solidarity building um in a community where i'm basically relatively unknown like within this actual like neighborhood this actual area um it is one of the local politics is one of the um biggest things you have influence over um another thing i could uh, point to would be also like the no counter one k i had like no followers on twitter like literally my uh main political twitter had like i don't know like 60 followers or something like that i'm up to like over 300 now um so there's a lot to be said for that kind of thing rallying around con uh comrades and good content uh signal boosting as we said that's a really Why big thing i try to do that for um you asking, uh, solid Joseph? leftist causes and comrades as much as i can um as for me uh i'm Maschi. For the nerd cave uh twitch.tv slash mashi or mashi.live um i do political news commentary and satire um we uh watch fun videos um we do gaming here sometimes all that kind of stuff um i try to focus less on electoral more kind of like practical uh, you know, you know kind of, um, those kind of conversations i think electoral politics is important we do cover a fair bit of that you know i cover i follow a lot of electoral uh commentators as well um yeah that's basically my thing i'm a level one tranarchist um i identified as not minor and get that realization like about a month ago so hey, pretty new territory yeah. for me even though like Trans rights. you know in terms Trans of rights. queer gender all that kind of stuff it was always actually there <laughs> uh yeah that's my thing 
And also uh, follow all the other comrades on here. I follow like most of these people here, and if they're on the panel, then they're based. Uh, because not just from them, they hide it from you. True! We are based. Well, that wasn't oh. awkward at all. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot to do a plug. Go follow Zarel and also Zanzi, no, I... and now she's being ironic with fucking terrible puns. Okay, I've done my plug. Dickhead. Christ. Demon Mama, you go next. Zarel, I hate you sometimes. Yeah, my name's Demon Mama. Most of you probably know me um, already. You can find me right over here. Demon Mama live on Twitch. Uh, your Demon Mama on Twitter. Um, we're going to be doing a chat afterwards, so if you're interested in hearing some news updates, I'm going to probably have maybe a viewer call in. We'll see. Um, so yeah, if you want to come hang out in my chat afterwards, feel free to swing by. Very soon we will be launching demonmama.com. So if you want to get in before we have the website, before we blow up into the biggest thing ever, come on in. Come hang out. We're nice and cozy. I'll probably write into you when I'm done, Demon Mama. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Sheep, you go next. Hello. Uh, I'm Sheep in the Box. Uh, here's my thing. Uh, just to get out of the way. Uh, I guess my closing thing would be, uh, I think that media and representation, uh, all that kind of stuff is very important. Um, I think Don't if it wasn't, then to subscribe, you know, bits, uh, anything, anything you got, more you authoritarian you places wouldn't immediately take control if of the media. If you got it and you're willing and to share it, their own deeply uh, narrative. It. And I think that um, it's it's very important to <laughs> be aware of the power that media has and to uh, to try and use that to at least make the lives of of people a little bit better. And if you don't, everybody don't go sub to Sheep Honestly, and Box on YouTube. I think stream he does some really good, stream elements, donos, very I think are better educational than and very fun videos. Me. And nine times out of ten, More they make you piss yourself no. laughing within the first two minutes. But if you got bits, he's the most sarcastic shit you'll ever come across. I do have a Discord, yep. In a good way. I try. I tried my best. Uh, um, he oh. recently put up, I don't know if it, it wasn't the last one, it was like two, three videos ago. Bam. He actually put up one that I helped him with because I uh, edited the script for him and stuff. How much do for I get one, for one bit? Which was uh, about like, sex work and yeah, one, some of the like challenges faced cent. by sex workers and former sex workers. Unfortunately. So that's good. Yeah, they take it, they double, they double dive on it. Um, they double dip. Mabase, you're up. Twitch double dips. Hello, what's up? I'm Mabasite. I stream at twitch.tv slash Mabasite. Right now we're playing through actually... Yeah. Uh, they do. What they do. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 4. Oh, sick! This is mir I don't know if this is mirrored on my on your end, but it's Crash Bandicoot 4 on PlayStation 4. So every time someone subs, I do the Crash Dance. If you're not aware of the Crash Dance, uh, you can like look it up. It's, it's, it's fucking based, okay? And uh, outside of that, we do a lot of a lot of commentary, especially on uh, on on like my local politics, particularly here in like in Chicago. And uh, well, recently, I've got I've attempted to try to get more into uh, I do what Zanzi recommended, which is growing my influence and especially growing it amongst like other Black people, people that I can reach. So uh, one of our most more recent vods, right before Crash, we. Uh, we I, I, we actually had to sit down with a buddy of mine uh, that I grew up with like since we were like kids, and um, I have, like we we're slowly but surely uh bread filling them, which is uh which is exciting. That is exciting. Good job. That's really cool. Johnny, you're up. What's up, you guys? Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm an elf in a human body, and uh, I am a person who tries to be as educational as possible really cool. with my with my content. Um, I do interviews with people in their respective fields of influence. I uh, do research for different, really specific streams on stuff like math and science, usually. Um, and I also do daily commentary on social events, uh, politics, things like that. Um, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Johnny Scarlet and Twitter at Wicked Day and find other stuff if you come and just you know, hit the channel and follow and, and like type in socials or whatever. But anyway, my final thoughts on this topic are uh, basically to reiterate my initial thoughts, which are that uh, where we should PC check the media is highly, uh, highly relative so whatever is going on, it's highly contextual. Um, make sure that you are not trying to whitewash accuracy 
and also support your local artists because those are the people who are making the most accurate representations of our world, in my personal opinion. Yeah. And I'm going to check out you guys. Uh, I'll probably pop over to Demon Mama a little bit later, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little break for a second. But thanks, you guys, so much for having me here. Yeah, I'll definitely get you on again. Hi. Yay, Johnny's going to come by. Up, my dude. That's so cool. All right. Uh, I. Yeah, true. I think true. more about uh, whether Marvel. one could grow their impact or their platform as a good way to uh, make change as opposed to sort of uh, the reflexive harshness I often have when I'm seeing problematic media and problematic content. Uh, I maintain I think we can enjoy problematic stuff and be hyper, hyper critical of it. True. Without necessarily being crazy harsh. I 100% and... agree. Yeah, I'm Jake Mitnerd36. I mostly stream music on Twitch when I'm not doing other things on YouTube and twitch.tv slash mitnerd36. Thank you so much for having me on, Kez. Everyone should follow everyone on this panel. True. My favorite musical should. Co-host. Good people to watch. Um, you've also been dipping into games since you updated your rig. Yes, I'm going to start uh, playing. I'm going to start a regular video game uh, night, uh, each week. I'm waiting Power to hear nightmares. from someone who might oh, be willing cool. to do it with me, but I will. I, either way, I'll be doing a playthrough of Neo Feud by Silver Spook for the next mm, uh, couple cool. months, and I recommend people check Silver Spook out. Uh, that's cool. Nice. Um, I like Midnight a lot. Yeah, depending on what you want to play, I'm always down to play some video games. You need to get Phasmophobia. You oh, I've heard that game's knowledge. good. I'm not good. kidding. It is the creepiest shit on the planet. You'll love it. Okay. You so... find that the only good video game is Bugs Bunny Lost in Time for the PlayStation One. That's a weird way of saying Super Mario. That's a weird way of saying Super Mario 64. <laughs> Super Mario 64. Uh, it is. That's because that's why I, did, I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I interpreted it as Conker's Her Day, but that's like... now that pretty is pretty sure Batman the yeah, animated but, series but, of video game. But but wait, but, what? That's the thing. What? Yeah, medieval for the NES back PlayStation in the day. One. Nice. Medieval for PlayStation 1. And also Time Splitters 1 and 2. Ooh, no, we're Time Splitters. No, we're... Ah. Mm, that was a good fucking game. Oh, I love oh, Time anyway. Splitters. Time Splitters is good. Time Splitters is right. good. Thank you all for coming. I love you to everyone here. For those who don't know, I will be having an argument probably on Tuesday with Dario on stream. Uh, we're going to be arguing about specifically uh, assisted suicide. Oh, um, interesting. Because we seem to heavily disagree on the benefits. That would be very interesting. Uh, risks. Hope they've done their suicide. ethics reading. Um, and then the week after, I'm planning an all Irish panel. Uh, he doesn't agree with specifically it. about the abuses of the Catholic Pretty strongly, Church in actually. Ireland, which we dipped into a little bit earlier on. Uh, and not yet, ways I haven't. That we can address but I'd like them to give it a and things shot. that we should be doing and the pressures we should be putting on people and where we should be uh, putting that's Box. on these Demi-Kin. pressures to kind of um, I think Kez's camera is get a these babies up. and their mothers and then all the other kids that were abused by this system um, get them the Kez justice Box. that they I can deserve. Shout Kez, out. Kez is the host of the panel today. Um, because that's that's really something important at the moment. Uh, right. With that in mind, I'm yep. going to jump out of the way. Uh, Bye, everyone. I love each and every one of you. Bye. Bye, all. Thank you for hosting the panel, guys. Of course. Thank you. Right. What did you think of that chat? Was it a good conversation? A bad con- All right. That was very, very interesting. Um, we kind of went all over the place, but I thought it was an interesting panel nonetheless.